What's goody? What is up, everybody? We are back with the hopefully the finale, or, or else I'm gonna have to change the title. <laughs> we are back with the finale of the Greatest Attorney 2. Uh, last time we left off, I can't even recount all the shit that happened, bro. Fucking the judge, judge uh, from the first game, from the first case. Found to be a killer. Sholmes is actually a genius and was planning for all this shit to happen. Alright. Alright, ah. So many things have happened. And I cannot wait to see how this game ends, bro. Like I said, hopefully I can finish it today. That's why I started a little bit earlier today. Um, so I can have some more time to play with this game. Um, Let me switch over to the live scene. And I also got my hands on the God of War, uh, collect not, not the collector's edition, uh, the other edition. What was it called? Let me look it up. It was like some weird name. Uh, the Jotner edition? That bitch, $270. I, I got my hands on that. Thank you. Now I actually gotta beat the first game. I need to get on that. Shoutouts to Wario64. Appreciate you. Also, shoutouts to the Disrespected Podcast and Rich for like in between the stream. Appreciate y'all. It's time to put the fuck the world ends with you saga to an end. <laughs> the epic conclusion. The finale. The saga. The arc. is coming to an end. Oh, this music is so good. But let me go ahead and lower it, bro. Let me go ahead and start the game up, too. Let's fucking go. Shoutouts to Capcom. Cap gods, I should say. Load up the game. The resolve of Ryu no Suki Naruhoto, Trial Part 2, The Old Bailey. Uh, let me see. There we go. The Reaper. Oh, I forgot we stopped like halfway through this. The Reaper and the Assassin Exchange. I've never taken the life of another, nor have I instructed another to kill. I've been investigating the truth behind the Reaper for years, and I was aware of Gregson's involvement. That's the reason why I went to Fresno Street that day, and how I came to discover the body. The point is, no common thread exists between myself and Gregson, myself, Gregson, and Dr. Wilson. Clearly, therefore, there was no reason to suspect me of being behind the assassin exchange. Hmm. So you deny all accusations by the prosecution, both that you are the Reaper of the Bailey, and that you are and that you masterminded the assassin exchange. I acknowledge that the public at large believe me to be the Reaper. However, that's a fallacy, which alone I, which alone am, am in a position to forswear. Naturally, the prosecution believes the testimony just given by the accused to be untrue. Ryonosuke Narahodo. Yes? Let me ask you, why are you here? What really brings you to this courtroom? A desire to uncover the truth. Even if the truth proves your client to be guilty. From all my experiences in this courtroom, I've come to realize something. The truth can't be hidden. 
Sooner or later, it will come out. So it's always my intention to work with my client in pursuit of the truth. I want you to remember what you just said. Enough dilatory chatter. Counsel for the defense, proceed to cross-examine the witness. Yes, my lord. I know exactly what you're thinking, Cosimo. And I know you're just waiting to point it out. The contradiction you've convinced you've you're convinced lies somewhere within this man's testimony. So you're not so you're not what the general public refer to as the infamous reaper of the Bailey. Exactly. Don't imagine for a moment that the court will be satisfied with a one-word answer on this. I realize that. If you're intending to comment on every sentence, this could take a while, Kazum. Didn't you find it disturbing, though? That one by one, defendants would be, uh, who'd uh, been acquitted after your unsuccessful prosecution were killed? Let me answer that question by posing another. If one by one defendants who'd been acquitted after your successful defense were killed, would you find that disturbing? Disturbing? I couldn't possibly say how that would make me feel with a one word answer like that. Exactly. Well, that told me. But even though I'm not the Reaper, that doesn't mean I ignored all the hearsay. You say, for years? How long exactly? Since the very first time the Reaper's influence was felt in this courtroom. Oh, whoops. Ten years ago now. And your investigations led you somehow to, inspe uh, to Inspector Gregson, you're saying? I didn't want to believe it. He was a personal acquaintance. We'd worked on cases together in the past. A friend, even. It felt like a betrayal, but... I demanded permission to search his office at the yard without his knowledge. Which is when you found his secret notebook, is it? It's when I first learned of the location he'd noted only as Grouse, and the appointment at 5pm on the 31st. Though I didn't know the significance of those details at the time. So now we're at the nub of the matter. As it turns out, the significance for me personally was very unfortunate. But why did you go to that specific location? I thought that if it was the Reaper's headquarters, then by turning up there at 5 o'clock I would catch whoever was involved red handed. Sadly, that was all that all that was awaiting me was the inspector's corpse. Yes, even though it wasn't designed for you, you walked straight into the trap uh, set by Jigoku. Exactly. Jigoku had intended to implicate Hugh Boone, but unhappily for me, I arrived at the scene first. Ha! Ah, a ridiculously careless blunder. Moved on, <laughs> moved on to just throwing insults around, I see, Kazuma. Think what you will, it doesn't change the truth. Oh, whoops. There is a link between you and Gregson, though. Of course, we were close acquaintances. We'd worked on, on numerous cases together. I considered the man to be a mentor of sorts. He taught me a number of important lessons. He, he did? Such as what? Where to buy good fish and chips, and such like. Well, that was convincing. Dr. Wilson was a coroner, of course, but that was some time in the past. 
And in any case, I understand it was several years ago now that he was invited to work at a Japanese university. That's right, he was a visiting professor at Imperial Yumei University in Tokyo. It should be unambiguously clear then, that no link exists between myself and him. In other words, I had no motive for sending some assassin across the oceans to kill the man. It sounds plausible enough, and I want to believe it. But something about this just doesn't quite sit right with me. Hmm. Certainly, as it stands, there's no evidence to suggest that you concocted the scheme. But as it stands, we have only the accused's insistence of his innocence. Sorry? Perhaps there is some reason that would explain why he masterminded the assassin exchange. And if a reason could be established later in these proceedings, then the accused's claim in this testimony that he wasn't involved would, be, uh, would amount to perjury. I mean, that doesn't really matter in these games. Everybody lies. Well, yes, that's true, but... Clearly, Kazuma-sama intends to identify a reason and use it to make his case. So if we don't identify something first, he'll gain the advantage. This could be dangerous. A convincing testimony by Lord Van Zeeks. Hey, shout out to FB for liking in between the stream, bro. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Dun, 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 dun. Certainly, with no apparent connection between the three men, there is no way to establish a motive. The testimony seems unassailable as far as I can see. Oh dear me, what a bleak expression! I agree, there doesn't appear to be any particular link between them, at first glance. But with the inclusion of one other person, I must be overthinking it, surely. Another person, Mr. Naruhoto? I need to think back all over all the information we've gleaned so far. Oh, was good, FB. The world ends with you, squad, is in the house, sir. Stop saying stuff like that, bro. It hurts my feelings. This is the fuck the, ends, the world ends with you, squad. <laughs> How you doing, FB? You doing all right? Dun, 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 dun. Hey, and I appreciate the the retweet as well, FB. All right, and I'll review my notes about the case and all the evidence in the court record. Could it be that Lord Van Seek has something to hide after all? Just chillin'? Hey, that's good here. Hmm. Okay, so Ryanosuke said Gregson and Van Zeeks have a connection. But then he suggested that someone else has a connection with him. I mean... There is no common thread. Uh, no common thread exists between myself, Gregson, and Wilson. Van Zeeks, age 33, nationality British, 
Time of death, 31st of May, between 9 p.m. and midnight. Observations, death from a single stab wound to the heart. Others, superficial external wounds indicative of a duel. Recent scarlet ink stains visible on the little and, and ring fingers of the right hand, but no document in corresponding ink was found. Hmm. Vital evidence recovered from the victim's stomach during autopsy. Ugh. Credit to Inspector Gregson for petitioning so doggedly for the autopsy procedure. No internal trauma noted anywhere in the, in the body. So they mention Gregson in this, and it has Wilson, and Wilson looked over it. And it has to do with his brother. I would say the autopsy report. Let's go! What is this? An autopsy report? Wait, this is 10 years old, from the autopsy of Lord Clint Van Zeeks. What? My brother's autopsy report. FB is playing Tomb Raider. Six, apparently. I'm pleased to see the defense doesn't intend to run from the undeniable truth. Order in the court. What reason do you have for presenting a 10-year-old autopsy report here, counsel? Because they're all linked together? This, the autopsy report of uh, the professor's final victim, isn't, uh, <laughs> he said, yes, I am, is an indelible link between Inspector Gregson and Dr. Wilson. Uh, between Inspector Gregson, Dr. Wilson, and the defendant. Not that accursed name again. The professor. I've personally researched all of the court records relating to that case. I know at the time, autopsy was considered sacrilege to the victim's souls. And for a member of the uh, aristocracy like Lord Clint Van Zeeks, it was unthinkable. But someone implored the powers that be it to allow the autopsy to go ahead, Inspector Gregson. He declared that he was certain he would obtain conclusive proof from the procedure. And it was Dr. Wilson who conducted the autopsy. His signature is clearly visible on the document. As promised by Gregson, the autopsy did, pr did indeed pr uh, produce evidence. Evidence that conclusively proved Genshin Asogi was guilty of the murders. In my brother's dying moments, he mustered all of his remaining strength to leave that vital clue behind. Indeed, that was the key to indicating the professor for his crimes and the conclusive, that conclusive evidence that convicted him. It enabled Lord Van Zeeks here to avenge his brother's senseless death with a marvelous victory in court. A marvelous victory, was it? I wonder if that's really true. What? Could be- could the same be said if it turned out that the key piece of evidence in question was in fact fabricated? If the inspector, the coroner, and the prosecutor all colluded together to cast an innocent Japanese man as a mass murderer and send him to his death? That's outrageous. And now, Ten years later, for some reason, the secret has been threatened and needs protecting. Which is why the inspector and the coroner had to be silenced, isn't it? By someone in power in Japan and in Britain, using the two killers recruited by for, an exa for, an, for the assassin exchange. Order! Order at once! Ten years ago, my father, uh, was convinced- was convicted in this very courtroom as a mouse murderer, to be sentenced to death. But it was all a sham, and I swore to myself that I'd prove it. Which is why I had to come to Britain, whatever the cost. You'll have to forgive me if I feel compelled to toast this n vengeful Nimponese's tenacity of purpose here. However... 
He who fails to quash his emotions in the courtroom has failed as a lawyer. Come on, Kazuma. You know this won't wash. You're claiming your father was misrepresented in a trial that took place a whole decade ago. You must see that without evidence, that's nothing more than a wild accusation. As it happens, I have evidence. Aw, oh, shit. What? As the court has heard, I crossed the channel to France with Greg... Uh... With Gregson on the 31st. I went with him on the pretext of being the assassin recruited to kill Tsushiro Jigoku, but my true inten intentions were to make the inspector tell me the truth. What truth? The truth about the evidence, and he acknowledged what I'd already deduced. There's a closely guarded secret about what went on in that autopsy ten years ago. What? A secret? I know nothing of any secret. While we waited for my supposed mark in Jigoku's cabin. Man's got the receipts, facts, bro. I drew my clan's illustrious sword, Karuma, before the inspector's eyes. He very quickly understood and understood what my true motive was. Right, I see. You're that Asogi's young lad, are you? And what, you're gonna cut me down with that thing, is that it? That will very much depend on the answers you give to my questions. I want to know what really happened ten years ago. The truth. That's all. Before we get into it, let me make one thing clear. I still believe your father was the professor, and there's no doubt in my mind. But unfortunately, back then, we didn't have the evidence that we needed to make the crime stick. So, you admit it then? The evidence used in my father's trial was fabricated? Damn. It was for the good of the country. Anyway, I was just following orders. Orders? What exactly did you do? Speak. I'm not saying another word. Even if your life depends on it? That's right. Even then. Bro, what is going... Bro, what is going on? This man... Why is everybody so... Hell-bent on protecting this secret, bro? So that's when the tip of the sword broke. Oh, Kazuma-sama. If the results of Clint Van Zeek's autopsy were fabricated, then the investigating officer Gregson and the lead coroner Wilson must have known about it. And they can only have been ordered to, per uh, to pervert the course of justice in that way by one man. The man leading the case for the prosecution, Barrack Van Zeek's. In other words... The defendant did have cause to organize this exchange of assassins. Exactly. And what and what as was established earlier, it was to have it was it has to have been the Reaper himself who liaised with Jugoku in Japan to ar arrange the exchange. Ah. So it follows that the Reaper's true identity can only be that of the man who stands accused in this courtroom today, Barak Van Zeeks. Kazuma Sogi. What? What you've just told the court. Are you absolutely certain of your facts? Did Gregson really fabricate evidence for that trial ten years ago? I heard it with my own ears. His shameful admission. In that case, I know. Get him? <laughs> the name of the Reaper. What? What? Lord Van Zeeks. I gave no such orders. I know that for certain. 
which narrows down the remaining possibilities to one. If Lord Van Zeeks isn't the one behind all this, then yes, there is only one other person who could have done something like that. I believe I know who it is too. Aw, oh, is it time? Is it time, bro? You? I just had a feeling this name was gonna come up. What I've been saying ever since the beginning of the f well, not the beginning, but like as soon as we got to Britain in the first game, I fucking knew. I knew Strongheart was gonna be the villain, bro. And not just because of all the hints, also because Strongheart was the previous prosecutor for the case before he let he gave it to Van Zeeks, who wanted to prosecute this case. It has to be Strongheart. Or is it Beppo, bro? Sandwich? It has to be Strongheart. If I'm wrong, I'm gonna be very shocked. It has to be him. Let's fucking go! The only person who could have arranged the assassin exchange and manipulated the autopsy results is the Lord Chief... Chief uh, is the Lord Chief Justice himself, Lord Mail Strongheart. What? Lord Strongheart? Yes, it's true that 10 years ago the defendant handled the prosecution of the professor in court, but he only took over the case after his brother Lord Clint Van Zeeks had been killed. You f I fucking knew it, bro. I can only assume. Uh, I can only assume that this is the most inappropriate joke in British judici uh, judicial history. Well, Lord Van Zeeks, ten years ago, I was very new to my profession, but I had a burning desire to avenge my brother's death, so I pleaded for control of the case that was brought up before. The investigation to that point, the supplication of the lords to allow my brother's corpse to be examined, all the evidence I was given, the autopsy reports, it all came from you. I've spent my life since then believing I was in your debt for the way you stood aside and let me handle the trial, but I see now, I was very much mistaken. It was a hugely influential force that caused the inspector and the coroner to break the law ten years ago, and that same force that was still felt a decade later on the other side of the world by Sashiro Jigoku. Lord Strongheart, everything falls into place when we recognize that you are the Reaper of the Bailey. It has to be him, bro. It ha Damn! The court awaits your response, my lord. This may very well go down in British judicial history, but I assure you, it is no joke. Consider this, a formal accusal by the defense. It doesn't warrant a response. A formal uh, accusal? Don't be absurd. The defense's claims are utter nonsense, a wild fantasy at best. You're not going to defend yourself? You claim there was some wrongdoing with Lord Ver uh, Clint Van Zeeks' autopsy. That's, ut that's utterly untrue. But I heard it from Gregson's own lips. He admitted to it. And where is your evidence? What? Gregson's dead now. Unless you were thinking of summoning a ghost to the stand. Hey, is that a reference to, <laughs> to the original trilogy? Let's go ahead and get some spirit mediums up. Uh... In here, bro? You you mean to say... I forgot how the system works in your little backwater country. But in the courts of the British Empire, without evidence, there is no case. I have no intention of entertaining some wild fantasy that can't possibly be substantiated by anyone or anything. Duh! Order, order in the court. 
following Inspector Gregson's murder in the light of Dr. Wilson's death as well. There's really no one left who could testify about the events ten years ago. Means there. So that was the real purpose of the, of the Assassin Exchange. This court has no business raking over the coals of a case that was, conclu that was concluded a decade ago. Hey, what's good, D-Rail? What up, bro? How you doing? The accusal brought by the uh, prosecution and the defense is categorically denied. I fucking knew it, bro. It like like I said a little bit earlier, bro. Ever since we got to Great Britain, this man has been just so obviously evil, bro. There really was no proof of his evilness, and now it's all starting to come together, bro. Uh, been good. I I'm good. I've been enjoying a much needed day off. Hey, that's what's up, bro. And we're finally getting to accuse this man of all his bullshit, bro. I take it there are no objections. And he's the judge too. Hey, bro, it's fucking perfect, bro. Cosmo. He's more or less waited his whole life for this moment. Is there really nothing else we can do now? Well, judge... Well, I mean, there's the judge, but he won't... Uh, Judge Jigoku, but he won't talk, though. Is there no other avenue we can go down in pursuit of the truth about what happened all those years ago? If only there was someone who could testify about Clint Van Zeeks' autopsy. Yeah, wasn't it, um... Yeah, Professor Mikotoba, he wrote the report. So he can testify. There is someone. He's gone to extraordinary lengths. Who's dirty laundry we airing out, bro? Everybody's apparently because, bro. Everybody getting, bro. I'm telling, bro. G Gregson is dirty. He he was working for the Reaper. We fight. We we trying to prove that this dude is the Reaper who been killing all the criminals, bro. Fucking this dude was dirty or was set up apparently. This bitch is crazy. This dude got uh, lost his job. Uh, <laughs> these two are fucking thieves bro like everybody everybody going through it bro he's gone to extraordinary lengths to cover his tracks we found out that uh the judge from the first game uh, of the first case bro he was dirty bro he killed Gregson bro oh shit they all dirt bro every bro I'm telling you bro there's so many lies bro even so far as dispatching an assassin all the way to Japan to ensure dr. Wilson's silence Bro. And Dr. Scythe won't say anything against Strongheart. But there's still one ray of hope. That's right. Y'all didn't think of him, but I thought of him. What's up? Susado is clean though, right? Oh, she is clean. Yeah. Actually, there is one person. One person who could still testify about that autopsy. Don't be ridiculous. There's no... That's all I care about. <laughs> Who, Ryunosuke? Who? Tell me. Kazuma, I... Please! This trial can't end. Not yet. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing it for the truth. The person the defense would like to call to the stand to testify about the autopsy of Lord Clint Van Zeeks is Eugene Mikotoba <laughs> who we and also the biggest shock of all derail is that sh uh Herlock Sholmes is actually smart bro he actually a genius that blew my mind bro heaven help us another Japanese and you being racist too strong heart oh we getting this man an expert in forensic science, in, uh, in forensic science, uh, medicine, my lord. Professor Yuji Mikotoba. 16 years ago, he came to London with Sachiro, uh, Jigoku and Genshin Osogi as visiting students. Hey, shout outs to William for liking and retweeting the stream. Appreciate you, bro. And what could his testimony possibly tell us? Professor Mik- Goat- <laughs> Goatlock Sholmes, bro? <laughs> bro, 
I was doubting him for two games, but I, he he came through, and it turns out he he was just playing dumb, bro. That's fucking crazy. This man is actually a genius. Professor Mikotobo was the primary assistant during the autopsy in question. He was also the person who actually penned the report. Incorrect. The autopsy was carried out by the coroner, Dr. Wilson. The report carries his signature. It was the primary assistant's duty to keep a written record of the coroner's uh, report uh, work during the procedure. Hey, shout out to D-Rail for liking in between the stream. Appreciate y'all. In actual fact, the coroner merely read the report at the end of it and signed it. In other words, Professor Mikotobo witnessed the entire autopsy from start to finish. The defense demands professor that Professor Mikotoba uh, be summoned as a witness as a matter of urgency. What really happened in that autopsy report, uh, uh, la autopsy laboratory, ten years ago, is something that only he can tell us. The defense's demand is denied. What? But Professor Mikotoba is in London, and at this very moment, we could summon him in to the stand in minutes. No, of course he's not going to agree to it. Strongheart has no intention of summoning anyone who knows. He's too concerned about protecting himself. Prosecutor Osogi, let me refresh your memory, as you seem to have forgotten the prosecution's stance. Only minutes ago, you accused the defendant of being the Reaper and, the, and of masterminding the Assassin Exchange. Uh, I did, yes. So present your evidence for those claims and make your case complete. Uh, I... Come on. Cosmo, don't do this, bro. I know you wanna... Ah, uh, At this time, I don't have the requisite evidence. But, but that's exactly why we need witness testimony. Where's the old judge? Well... This is a closed case, so apparently... Lord Strongheart, who was... Who was totally not guilty, by the way, uh, decided to take over proceedings and is uh, acting judge. And we're accusing him of being the Reaper, the man behind all the killings, uh, telling Gregson to ki go kill some people or somebody. He's behind it all, bro. The professor case is closed, and he's trying to stop us from talking to Mikotoba right now. There are no clues in the distant past that will boast your argument today. I'm afraid to say, Prosecutor Osogi, that you would appear to be possessed by the spirit of your late homicidal father. Damn! Now, as I stated earlier, this court has already reached a conclusion with respect to the matter at hand. Inspector Gregson was murdered by Japanese Supreme Court Judge Sashiro Jigoku. As for any hidden circumstances that may exist, they will be investigated in due course by the proper authorities. But we, but we all know what will happen. That'll just give the mastermind of, of the whole venture time to cover his tracks again. By which you mean me? Yes, of course you. Your punishment for this contemptible behavior will be decided at a later date. As for you, Prosecutor Osogi, you will, re you will be remanded following these pr proceedings Willingly, I trust, since you gave your word. Ah. This futile game of revenge is over. Young Master Asogi. Ah, damn. Uh. That would be all. I hereby declare this trial to be over. Court is- Let's go! <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> but it's Goatlock Sholmes, baby! The genius is here to save the day. M Mr. Sholmes! This is no place for amateur detection. Mr. Shum, there he is! <laughs> oh, he's no amateur. A couple of uh, 
A few hours ago, I would have said, yeah, he, yeah, he's trash, but he's he's a fucking goat. May I remind you that these proceedings are closed to the general public? You will leave the courtroom at once. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes was instrumental in the apprehension of Sh Sashiro Jugoku before he let he fled from Europe. The court should hear what he has to say. Lord Mayo Strongheart, it's imperative that you refrain from bringing this trial to at an end at this stage. Is it really? And why would that be? You need only recall your own words from the opening of the trial to answer that question, if I may. We will stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth behind these disturbing findings. Yes, because I know who the mastermind is. It's Iris. <laughs> the fake ass uh, dude came, the ginger came through. <laughs> Surely it can't be. Surely it can't be. That the shock of being accused of being the Reaper yourself has erased that from your memory, can it? The whole truth, sir, has already been uncovered. It would seem that we have a great many important members of the, judici of the judiciary present, present here today. I put it to you, my dear fellows. Should the trial end at this juncture? After all, why, why have you been invited to attend? To nod along at the pre, uh, pre, prevarications of your superiors. Let's fucking go. Order, order in the court. It seems to, it seems to me that we stand before a door that leads to a new era of legal practices, a door that is ajar. Let us emerge from the shadow of the Reaper's decade-long ascendancy. For you and you alone, my dear fellows. Have the power to push this door open now. The auditors in the gallery have no rights to express an opinion on court proceedings. Silence! He's right. The judge has absolute authority here. Yes, if he caused the trial to end, it must end. What will that really do? I sense dark things occurring behind the scenes. Dark things indeed. Is there a single person? Uh, ah, I can I can read that. What what's? The trial should go on. Summon the witness. That's right. We need to clear this up before that young Japanese fellow is remanded in custody. Is there a single pers uh, person uh, here present who can honestly say he doesn't sense the same? Look at Kazuma, bro. He's like, oh, shit. My lord, you assured those present that you would uncover the whole truth here. Vindicate yourself of this outlandish ac accusation. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's the very foundation of British law. I mean, that's supposed to be every law, uh, court of law, but okay. A toast to my dependable colleagues in the gallery. On with the trial. Testify. 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 Well, my lord. You hear the voices of British justice, I take it. I think you'll find it to be rather awkward to silence. Let's fucking go. Oh, stretch, I got you, FB. The court will recess briefly. I have no intention of shrinking from these allegations. Bailiff, arrange for the subpoena of the witness at once. As soon as the gentleman arrives at the courtroom, we shall reconvene. Let's fucking go. A recess won't be necessary, my lord. Pardon? Megatoba is a close friend of mine. He accompanied me today and is waiting in the antechamber as we- Let's go! <laughs> I do believe he's been enjoying a little trip down memory lane, in fact. What? Professor Mikotoba is here in the courthouse? Mr. Sholmes, you- you didn't know this would happen, did you? Of course he knew, bro! This man is a genius! My dear fellow, no one is in a better position to answer that question than you, surely. I wasn't just asking for the fun of it, you know. Well, I must thank you for your assistance in this matter. Mr. Sholmes, I, I thought he was done. <laughs> However... You are of no further use here. 
kindly leave the courtroom at once. I thought he was dumb. That's what I thought too, bro, but he's a genius! But of course, in truth, I find myself rather busy now as a result of these developments. Mr. Narahodo. Uh, yes. I trust you have Iris's little lucky charm with you. Absolutely. It's still in my pocket. She sends her regards and, as, and a reminder. If you find yourself at a dead end, the ears at, are at your disposal. Just one tug, if you please. Oh, uh, of course. In that case, the trial will continue without delay. Bailiff, show the witness to the stand. Let's fucking go. So it's Lord Strongheart. He's the Reaper of the Bailey. Where exactly is this trial going to take me, I wonder? Just how deep am I about to be plunged into the blackness of the Abyss? Well, I'm ready. I'm ready to head into the heart of this maelstrom and confront whatever horrors it, it tries to drown me under. To be continued. Oh, we're still gonna keep going. Oh, hell nah. We are gonna keep going. The trial part three. Oh, this, this, I think Rich said that this was the last part. So we're literally nearing the end. Oh my God. And we got the girl from the, uh, from the autopsy laboratory. So, witness, please state your name and occupation for the court. Eugene Mikotoba, le lecturer in forensic medicine at the Imperial Yumei University in Tokyo, Japan. And, Professor Mikotoba, the young lady beside you is... Ah, this is Dr. Maria Gori. Scotland Yard's practicing coroner, the daughter of Dr. Scythe, I understand. Yes, Dr. Scythe. I'm afraid I can't tell you why she's here, she just... appeared. <laughs> is that a ghost? <laughs> Bro, I'm saying. You summon this you summon this strange Japanese man as a witness to that autopsy. But you don't summon Mama. That makes no sense. She was there too. That's about the size of it. I've had her eyes boring into the side of my cheek constantly. Whilst I was in the antechamber too. Poor man. The idea of it's making me shudder. The revelations about Dr. Scythe that, that came to light some days ago defiled the reputation of the entire judiciary. It was therefore deemed unfit to appear as a witness in today's proceedings. The Ministry of Justice's decision on that is final. Well, we wouldn't want any more perjury to be committed, would we? Oh shit. The Ministry of Justice? Some questionable strings are being pulled, I think. Nah, she is my waifu? Jesus. Will, that's that's like four or five now, Will. <laughs> I remember you, Dr. Mikotoba. But I certainly never expected to be... Oh, it's three, bro. I certainly never expected to be meeting you under these circumstances. How old is she? She's 19, so you're safe, Will. Yes, it's been a long while. What's this song? Lord Strongheart. The prosecution understands that you were visiting you were a visiting student of forensic science in London until ten years ago. That's right. I studied I studied under Dr. Wilson at St. Sinners. So you were present at the autopsy of my brother, Lord Clint Van Zeeks. I was, yes. I assisted Dr. Wilson with the entire procedure. Tch. Mama's far more skilled than any Japanese man. Stop with that racism. Well, Dr. Wilson asked me to be his primary assistant on that occasion. And this autopsy report was actually penned by you, I believe. Yes, I noted all of the doctor's findings. And when we were done, he read through the document and signed it. 
poor mama. As a secondary assistant, she wouldn't have had such a good view of all the innards. Ugh. So, Professor, do you remember the uh, do you remember Inspector Gregson? Yes, of course. If it wasn't for his insistence, Lord Van Zeke's autopsy would never have happened. But he was absolutely convinced that it would reveal decisive evidence against Genshin, you see. So Lord Strongheart had to entreat the nobility to allow it to take place. Do correct me if I'm wrong, my lord. It was as a result of that autopsy that a mass murderer was apprehended and justice was done. And don't you ever question it. But Gregson admitted, bef uh, admitted it before he was killed. He admitted that the results of the autopsy were fabricated. You were there at the time, so you must testify. You have an obligation to tell the truth about what really went on. Absolutely. That's precisely why I'm here. And that's why I'm here too. Very well then. You will give your formal testimony now, witness. But before you begin, a word of warning. Oh? You will state truthfully and accurately what you saw and what you heard at the time. I wouldn't dream of doing otherwise, my lord. The moment your testimony verges on supposition, I will expel you from my courtroom. Remember that. That is totally not obvious. From my observations, I couldn't say there was any indication of the autopsy re results being having been fabricated. Death resulted from a wound made by a western-style sword, transfixing the heart, that I found a little strange. There were no other signs of internal injury. Nothing questionable at all. It was just that beautiful but dangerous piece of evidence removed from the man's stomach. Presumed to have been swallowed by the victim as a way of posthumously identifying his, uh, his assailant. Hmm. No indication? Nothing to suggest fabrication? Professor Mikotoba, are you certain about that? Well, nothing that I could positively identify as such, much less swear to, to the much less swear to in testimony. Duh <laughs> Oh What is this even bro? Well that clears things up nicely. The only fabrication here, Sogi, has come from you. What? You claimed that the inspector confessed just before his death, but that, that is the fabrication. No, he freely acknowledged it, I swear he did. Really? With the tip of his, uh, with the tip of a sword at his throat? The man was clearly at his wit's end. The court would give no credence to this confession that was uttered in obvious desperation. Quite simply, there was nothing questionable about the investigation of Lord Clint Van Zeke's death. And with this testimony we have, without question, uncovered the whole truth of- You- you- you a little quick on this! Hey bro, give me a, a chance to cross-examine, sir. If I may, my lord. There was most certainly something questionable about it, and the whole truth rather- uh, does rather elude us, I feel. I beg your pardon. Well, you're obviously aware of the facts of the case. All four of the professor's previous victims died when an enormous beast was set upon them that ripped out their throats. Oh, such horrifying crimes. But curiously, the killer's last victim, Lord Clint Van Zeeks, suffered a different fate. Yes, you're right. He was stabbed through the heart with a sword. That's enough. I believe I warned you about this witness. I promised to curtail your testimony as soon as it as soon as it entered the realms of supposition or speculation. Hm. Very well, my lord. In that case, the defense will pursue a conclusion to this during the cross examination. What? I have the right to cross examine every witness after testimony. And I fully intend to exercise that right. Ryunosuke, 
I'm afraid that even the presiding judge has no authority to contravene the letter of the law, as I'm sure every member of the judiciary present in the gallery would agree. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we got you, bitch. Very well, you may begin, counsel. However, the moment your argument strays from the established facts, I will not hesitate to bring the cross-examination to an end. Proceed with caution. Yes, my lord. Mata! Mata! You... you couldn't say? No, sadly not. But then you couldn't say that there wasn't any indication either, could you? Beat his ass? <laughs> no, true, I couldn't. I was at Dr. Wilson's side as he performed the procedure, recording what he did. But at times, of course, he instructed me to fetch implements and such like. Whilst I was away from the operating table, I obviously could have missed something. And at those times, what was the secondary assistant doing? Following this Japanese man's orders to adjust their lighting or pass some implements. But that doesn't mean Mama wasn't a vital, a vital part of the team. G -g Quite, yes. So would you kindly refrain from staring at my cheek like that? Professor Mikotoba, think! Was there nothing at all that seemed out of place to you? Well, yes there was, as a matter of fact. In all of the previous four killings attributed to the professor, the victims were killed by an enormous dog. I believe. Their throats were, well, mauled. Hey, shoutouts to Press for liking in between the stream. Appreciate you, bro. Come through! Correct. And yet Lord Van Zeeks was stabbed. D do you mean to say, you think Lord Clint Van Zeeks may, in fact, not have been one of the professor's victims? There is no basis on which to doubt the findings of the investigation carried out at the time, bro. But, Genshin Asogi confessed to all of his crimes upon his arrest. He admitted to have taken the lives of all five members of the aristocracy. Ah. Yet the beast that was used to carry out the killings was never identified. No evidence was found to suggest that Genshin had ever kept a dog. A true hound of hell. Hmm. Mata! But, um, you weren't actually present at the autopsy yourself, were you, Dr. Gori? Does that matter? I mean, well, I just wonder how useful your testimony can be in that case, really. I mean, it would be different if your mother, Dr. Scythe, were in the stand, but... I've read all the paperwork about the case, and Mama's told me the story countless times. The statement I just said is exactly what's written in the autopsy report. I did confirm that myself at the time. It's true. Besides the stab wound, there are no other signs of internal trauma. Hmm, I see. Mama told me all about it. Oh? She said there was nothing of note internally, but that they did find an amazing piece of evidence. Something unbelievable. Unbelievable? What do you mean? Come on, Dr. Gori, what was it? It was just that beautiful but dangerous piece of evidence removed from the man's stomach. Mata! What exactly was it though? What does beautiful but dangerous mean? Well, it was sparkly and round with a hole as it might slip over a finger perhaps. It was a ring belonging to Genshin Asogi. But my father's ring was inside the victim's stomach. At the time, Genshin wore a large ring on the uh, digitus quartus on the left hand, the fourth or ring finger. I had understood it as uh, it was some sort of keepsake. When my father left for Japan 16 years ago, I was 8 years old. But I remember that ring. You do? My father's possessions were sent to our family home in Japan after his death. 
but the ring wasn't among them. Obviously not, it was a key piece of evidence. It remains under lock and key in the stores at Scotland Yard to this day. After the autopsy, Genshin was summoned by the police to check for the presence of his ring. It wasn't on his hand, of course. Moreover, there were deep abrasions on his ring where, where, where it had been pulled off. They were- they arrested the man there and then, right before my eyes. How could they? I brought the I brought the ring along with me today. What? Damn! That's a big ass ring! Here it is, a bit dusty from years in the stores. Good gracious, yes, that's it. I haven't seen that in ten long years. And- that was found inside the victim's stomach? I... Uh, yes, I'm afraid so. You hesitated there, Professor Mikotoba. Should we read something into that? Ah, uh, well... Yeah! <laughs> yeah, damn! It's just thinking that thinking back now... I didn't actually witness the moment it was extracted from the victim's body. Oh my! How much is that shit worth? Really? At that, at that precise moment, Dr. Wilson had asked me to fetch him a new scalpel, you see. Dr. Gory, the removal of historic evidence from the stores requires my consent, does it not? However it came to be here, the court cannot deny that this is crucial evidence for today's proceedings. We are, we are at the end, baby! <laughs> Very well, you may submit it. A ring belonging to Genshin Asogi found in Dr Lord Clint Van Zeek's stomach during the autopsy. The claws grasping the gem looked sharp enough to cause a very nasty- Yeah! That is, that's a big ass ring, bro. Someone swallowed that and there's no damage internally? It's not the sort of ring normally seen in Japan. They almost look like claws protecting that jewel. We must examine it very carefully. Oh, you're right. You're right. Let me examine that bitch first. These fat claws are doing a good job of pr protecting that equally fat gemstone in the middle of this ring. Yes, if you were clumsy, you could give yourself a rather nasty cut on them, I should think. Ow! Now my finger's bleeding. The claws are really sharp. Oh my, that was very quick clumsiness, <laughs> Mr. Narahodo, even for you. Must have had a spectacular throw game. <laughs> he was like, he was practicing with glizzies, bro. Who would make such a dangerous ring? You couldn't swallow it without doing yourself some fairly serious damage, surely. A sticky uh, machi bun of about that size would go down much better with some red bean paste in the middle. Someone as clumsy as me would probably manage to choke on it somehow. You gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta eat some glizzies, bro. <laughs> and that was the decisive piece of evidence that led to Genshin. Them glizzies practice uh, sessions actually paid just for that moment. <laughs> Paid off for just for that moment, bro. <laughs> and that was the decisive piece of evidence that led to Genshin Asogi's arrest. Correct. After further investigations of by Scotland Yard, the man admitted to his crimes. That's a lie. My father was no killer. Barrack Van Zeeks, it was you. You twisted the truth to suit your own purposes. Your hatred of me doesn't change the facts that that were established ten years ago. My brother Clint had closed in on the professor. In the end, he exposed the man and put a stop to his lethal rampage. In the way only a man of my brother's caliber could. Duh. That's everything, is it? Poor father. He looks so troubled. Perhaps because ten years ago, something happened that's been weighing on his mind. Oh, I couldn't say, were his words. That phrasing was very deliberate, I'm sure. I wonder if he's had his suspicions all these years. 
If that's the case, we need we need to use this cross-examination to prove what really happened. And remove any trace of doubt. If we could establish that Kazuma-sama's claim of fabricated evidence was true, we can't shy away from this now. Even if even if what uh, we might uncover could lead to a total calamity. Don't worry, Mr. Naruhoto. We'll be right I'll be right beside you. Whatever may happen. There are no other signs of internal injury. They made it a point to talk about the claws on this gem. Uh, clasping the gem looks sharp enough to cause... If you swallowed this, even if your throat game was on point, it would fuck up your, your, your stomach. Like, bro. I'm gonna say this. Let's fucking go! The court has heard that the ring was extracted from the victim's stomach. But you didn't actually see it being removed, did you, Professor Mikotoba? That's right. As I said in my testimony before, at that moment I was fetching a replacement scalpel that Dr. Wilson had requested. In other words, you can neither confirm nor deny whether this ring in fact really came from the victim's stomach or not. What are you suggesting, Counsel? That the ring was never in the victim's stomach to begin with. It's entirely feasible that Dr. Wilson fabricated that detail about the autopsy. What are you saying? That Dr. Wilson? That Dr. Wilson was in possession of the ring in advance, after it was somehow stolen from Mr. Osogi. And he produced it during the procedure, pretending to have found it there and then in the victim's <laughs> stomach. Damn, Dr. Wilson was dirty too? Um. Supposition at best. What possible evidence do you have to support such a rash claim? This evidence, right here. That's the autopsy report. It's explicit in that report, Counsel. Other than the ring, nothing unusual was noted internally. I'm not sure how you intend to prove your point. You've already done it for me, my lord. The lack of internal injury says it all. What? It, to swallow a ring of this size would require considerable effort and determination, and glizzies. In addition, and in addition to its size, there are the sharp claws around the gemstone to contend with. My brother was a determined man, and on the brink of death even more so, I'm sure. He would have stopped at nothing to ensure that evil, that, that evil killer was brought to justice. But if he, if he really had swallowed that enormous ring, it's inconceivable that no traces, no traces of its passage down to his throat, down his throat, would have remained as internal trauma. No. And there you've arrived at the sticking point. That's precisely why I had my doubts about the findings myself ten years ago. Then why didn't you say something at the time? I did. I still remember the conversation I had with Dr. Wilson in the, lab in the laboratory that day. Look at this! Now, this is a very curious thing to find in a man's stomach, wouldn't you say? But, isn't that rather peculiar, Dr. Wilson? What's that now, Mikotoba? Well, if he swallowed a ring of that size with those sharp metal claws that it has, surely you'd expect to see damage to the throat and esophagus. Torn, uh, mucous membranes at the very least. Dr. Mikotoba, may I remind you that I have vastly more experience than you? Damn, bro, I felt bad for him dying in the first game, bro, but now I, uh, bro, I don't feel bad for you at all. Uh, I'm terribly sorry. I can think of plenty of ways to explain why no injuries would be seen. No, let's say this. The victim would appear to have ingested the item as evidence to identify his assailant. Go ahead, write it down. So I was right. Dr. Wilson deliberately fabricated the result of the autopsy to implicate my father. I'm disappointed, counsel. That argument is nothing more than speculation. What? This case makes you look at all at characters in a different light. So, 
Like, so many. Like, so many characters that you see a different side of them. Hazuma, uh, Wilson, Miko Toba, uh, Herlock Sholmes, Iris even, you know, like, Strong, well, Strongheart, I always saw him as an, uh, as a villain, so this wasn't, uh, surprising. You know, you saw Van Zeeks being nicer. Uh, just so many characters, just, uh, it, it, this is really dope. I like that they're using all the established characters to push this uh, the story forward rather than introducing all these new ones. Dr. Wilson was best finale in all the games. It's so, much, it's so good. Dr. Wilson was Britain's leading authority on forensic science and autopsy work. There is no scientific basis on which to doubt the man's expert opinion. Pardon the interruption, my lord, but... Damage to the uh, mucous membranes of the throat is easily identified even in living subjects. Using a device called an endoscope recently demonstrated in practical use uh, in France. I want one. The government can pay. I don't think so. And Dr. Gory, rest assured that your removal of evidence from the stores without permission will not go unpunished. We open up the dead to find the truth. I beg your pardon? But Mama, she chose to stitch her corpses up with all her secrets inside. What, that's wrong? Oh, shit! Dr. Gory, it's looking as though she's chosen to walk a different path to her, to her Mama. Yes, the ring. What about the ring? I've just remembered something. An earlier incident. What incident? The one I recounted to you before, about a memory I have. Of Genshin Asogi saving my life. What? My, my father saved your life? Oh, that pissed him off. It was ten years ago, on a foggy night. Genshin and I were walking down some back streets at a late hour. All of a sudden... Don't make a peep, you're coming with us! Oh shit, you can see the ring- he had the ring on in this photo. Or whatever this flashback. All of our assailants were armed with pistols, their faces obscured by scarves. The next thing I knew, there was silence all around. Genshin lay on the cobbled street. Blood was seeping from his left hand. He shielded me. It was on the ring finger of his left hand that he, that he used to wear that ring. Ah, uh, uh, are you saying? I've always believed those thugs were after me, but now... I'm starting to question if perhaps I wasn't the intended target after all. What? Wait, but... Genshin was arrested two days after that attack. And in that short interval, the decisive evidence needed to indict him was miraculously found. You mean, the ring was stolen from him? You think that's what those thugs were after that night? Oh my god, so they are- Oh my god. You... you pathetic coward. You expect me to believe that you weren't involved? What do you mean by that? It was you, wasn't it? You're the one who took it. You stole my father's ring. You set the whole thing up so you could paint him as the mass murderer and have him arrest- Kazuma. Shut the fuck up. Open your eyes. What? Ryunosuke? You must know deep down. The truth can be completely obscured even when your judgment is only slightly clouded. But at the moment, 
You seem to be floundering through a dense fog. Is that why you were so insistent I should be present in this trial? To see you like this? Damn. <laughs> well, this is an amusing spectacle. What a grandiose expression on your face. As if you were Lady Justice herself. It seems you've thoroughly convinced yourself of this alleged fabrication of the autopsy results. So much so that you're apparently blind to the blatant contradiction that would be born out of it. What? Oh, it's extremely hard to believe it. Let us imagine that there was some misconduct during the autopsy. If that were the case, why would Asogi not have disputed the findings in his trial? Oh. In the closed court hearing ten years ago, the defendant never once denied the claims against him. Isn't that right, Lord Van Zeeks? Yes, that is indeed correct. Upon hearing the verdict of guilty, he merely closed his eyes, quietly accepting the judgment. The actions of a man who has accepted responsibility for his deeds and is resigned to his fate. But, but then... Oh my, that is very strange. If Mr. Osogi did nothing to oppose the charges against him then, that would surely mean there was no fabricated evidence. An obvious con conclusion at which you should have arrived many minutes ago, Prosecutor Sogi. Your twisted loyalty and clouded judgment are, are hampering your ability for logical thought. Duh. Genshin Asogi's silence at his hearing can mean only one thing. There was no fabrication of evidence during the autopsy of his final victim ten years ago. Bro, we were right there. But if that autopsy was all above board, there will be nothing to stop Lord Strongheart bringing this trial to an immediate conclusion. Thank you, Ryunosuke. If it wasn't for your frank words just now, this trial may have well ended prematurely. C Kazuma? What's this latest absurdity, Council? My lord, your reasoning is perfectly sound, but for one giant hole. I beg your pardon? Sir, don't you hear his theme right now? You claim my father's silence was due to the fact that there was no fabricated evidence, but there's another possible explanation. You've overlooked the possibility that he had a reason for maintaining that silence. Silence that would lead to him being convicted and sent to his death? If the autopsy results were an invitation, there's no conceivable, conceivable reason why the man wouldn't have protested. Oh, those results were an invention, all right. There's no question of that. Or are you forgetting that two people with a connection to the autopsy, to that autopsy, have been assassinated? If I force the grievances I feel for my mind, I start to see you in a very different light. I think perhaps it's you who's been living in delusion these ten years. But me Kazuma-sama has created one last chance for us here, Mr. Narahodo. If we can only show there was a reason for his father's silence in his trial. A reason why the man would have said nothing even though he was innocent. Could it have been part of some negotiation, perhaps? Negotiation? But who could he have negotiated with? Enough rhetoric. The, tr the court must be must be shown evidence. What proof do you have that? Uh, what proof do you have that could possibly explain Asogi's silence in court? Wasn't Asogi close with, um, what was his name? I can't see the, damn it. Wasn't Asogi close with, uh, uh, Genshin Asogi? Wasn't he close with Vigil? So maybe that negotiation was probably with him? He negotiated with Alamiya Productions large sums of money for me. <laughs> 
It could have been Vigil. But I can't present his his profile though. Ah. Uh. Maybe the Asogi papers? But well, that's his last wooden testament, though. Ah, Cavord is uh, engaged in some sort of negotiation with prison staff. It, it's this. It's true that Genshin Asogi's silence during this, his trial resulted in his conviction. Uh, but that didn't actually lead to his execution. On the contrary, it led to his escape. An escape that was only possible because he'd been sentenced to death. Although I find it hard to believe my father would have negotiated in, in that way, the defense is correct. A fake execution, falsification of a death certificate, and a jailbreak inside a coffin. Clearly such an elaborate plan couldn't have been made couldn't have been carried out by my father alone. He must have had the help of a collaborator from the judiciary. I have here the dismissal notice of the chief warder who was working in the prison at the time. As the notes uh, read, uh, the notes read, there are indications that a, the jailbreak was planning was in planning prior to the inmates' incarceration. In other words. There were suggestions of some sort of negotiation between Mr. Asogi and the British government. In exchange for his silence in court, he was given an assurance that he would be broken out of prison. Yes, with that sort of clandestine agreement in place, I, am I can imagine he would have kept very quiet. I would go further than that, in fact. I would say that the elaborate jailbreak of Mr. Asogi can be explained in no other way. Order, order. First fabricated evidence and now a jailbreak conspiracy. Of course. Because this is Ace Attorney. Because it's all intimately linked. The prosecution wishes to summon new witnesses to the stand. Witnesses? People who can testify about the jailbreak that took place ten years ago. Duh. Governor Caden? And the poor chief warder of the prison. I won't allow this trial to turn into a farce, to summon the governor of the prison after all these years. Oh, it wouldn't be any trouble, my lord. What? Father? Don't tell me. My dear friend may appear to be a little rattle, rattle pated at times, but I can assure you he is extremely thorough. He wired both Barclay and the local prison earlier, asking Governor Caden and Mr. Vigil to attend the old Bailey as a matter of extreme urgency. Go lock, <laughs> go lock Shongs, baby. I'm telling you, that man is a genius. Mr. Shongs did that? Are, are you telling me that both men are, unless I'm much mistaken, waiting just outside this courtroom at this very moment? Let's fucking go. Let's go, Sholmes is the GOAT, bro. I can't believe I'm saying it. Sholmes is the GOAT. <laughs> can't believe this. What the fuck? My lord, you must permit this trial to proceed as you declared at its outset. You promised that we would stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth be uh, behind these disturbing findings. Very well. Bring in the witnesses. Make no mistake, 
I, too, would like nothing more than to lay this business to rest once and for all. Sure you do. Would the new witnesses state their names and occupations for the court, please? Aye. Barry Caden, Governor of Barclay Prison. Everyone calls me gossip. I sell jaunty the- Um, your other persona, if you don't mind. Oh, I do beg your pardon. Of course. My name is Daily Vigil. I used to be the chief warder at Barclay Prison. The reason you've been summoned to here to court today is to testify about that jailbreak of the so of the so-called professor ten years ago. Oh, the professor! Well, I've been through it all this before, a decade ago. And the conclusion was that there was wasn't anything untoward happened. A convict escaped from your prison, Governor. Hardly what you'd call nothing untoward. Shit. Well, the convict's death certificate was somehow falsified after he was allegedly executed, and he escaped the prison inside his own coffin. A plan of that complexity could never have been carried out without the help of somebody of influence inside the prison. Governor Caden, don't imagine that the passage of time will afford you any protection. Fuck. If it turns out that you were involved in that plot to break out Mr. Asogi out of your prison, then of course. The consequences will be very serious. In all likelihood, a capital punishment. Oh, shit. God, hold on there, lad. All I did was... Witness. Governor Caden. Hmm? I... Sir! You have a critical role to play in the public safety of our country. A great responsibility to shoulder. The significance of your testimony uh, in court cannot be understated. Therefore... Think carefully before you speak. And Prosecutor Osogi, if you threaten the witness again, you will be held in contempt of court. My apologies, my lord. There's no disputing. There's no disputing. There's no disputing that uh, an intricate jailbreak plot was enacted ten years ago. Clearly, you were both involved in some way. So you will testify before the court now. And explain what exactly what took place. Very well. Let the witnesses give their formal testimony. Tell the court everything you know of the plot to break a sogi out of Barclay ten years ago. The jailbreak plot. It was the day that Japanese jock was found guilty. The directive came from the prosecutor's office. I assigned the convict of the chief ward er, vigil here and put the plan into action behind the scenes. I was responsible for Sogi right up until the until the night of his execution, but I knew nothing of any plot. I didn't know if there were uh, if there was some negotiations between the convict and the prosecutor's office. I all I did was carry out my duty. For Her Majesty's Great British Empire. A directive from the prosecutor's office. Are you saying that was th that was the jailbreak plot? Aye, that's right. Who sent it? Who authorized that plan? I didn't know that. You're saying you don't know? That's some bullshit. Listen, there wasn't anything about that professor case that wasn't an unusual in some way. I didn't ask any questions. I just did what I was told to do. More than that, I couldn't tell you. I see. But if the jailbreak plan originated from the prosecutor's office, then one thing is very clear. As suspected, there were clandestine dealings going on between Mr. Asogi and that office. That the jailbreak was promised in exchange for Mr. Asogi admitting to crimes he didn't commit. BS he knows? Oh yeah, he knows. That counsel is nothing more than speculation on your part. 
So, let me ask the defense. Oh, yes, my lord. I fail to see how these witnesses have any more pertinent information. Oh my god, you're... I'm gonna cross... Do you intend to insert... To assert your right to a cross-examination? Absolutely. I have no intention of squandering a single opportunity, my lord. It seems all you Japanese are fiercely tenacious. Stop being racist, bro. Very well. Proceed, counsel. Stop trying to find the truth that will convict me. And you say you don't know who actually issued the directive. Ah, that's right. All I can be sure of is that it was official. But if it was from the prosecutor's office, that narrows down who could have issued it straight away. And it wasn't me. I can't say everything with certainty that did it, that it, I can't, I can't say. I can't even say with certainty that it did originate from the prosecutor's office. Throw some money? What? There's no telling where it started. There's a fair chance it came from higher up the ladder. Basically, I can't give you any indication who was behind it. You can't be serious. All we can say for sure is that the order must have come from somebody with author in, in authority, I suppose. The likes of us on the ground, as it were, didn't bother with idle speculation. We just get the job done. Mata. So, Mr. Vigil, you didn't know anything about it at all? That's right. My only role in the scheme was as a scapegoat. That's right, isn't it, Governor? Damn. Some poor beggar had to take the rap for it. All right then. Who else did know about Who else did know about the plan? I have no first idea, laddie. My partner in the whole business was basically just dealing with the aftermath. But I wouldn't be surprised if there was other folk in the prison service who had been given similar orders. So you say- so you don't know who else was involved? Aye, that's right. All I can tell you is that the night it actually happened, the person at the reins was Dr. Stevens. Dr. Courtney Stevens. Or Dr. Scythe, as she's- as, as she's known now. <sighs> Why did I have to get, get caught up in such a terrible business? Did you not notice anything unusual happening in the lead up in the lead up to that night? <clears throat> oh, everything was unusual, exception after exception. After all, it was the professor. The man had terrorized the country as never before with his crimes. In order to hide his identity, he was forced to wear an iron mask over his head. Hideous treat, hideous treatment. The fellow was surprisingly docile for someone who had taken the lives of five country of the country's nobles. Being the chief warder, I was the only person permitted to approach his cell. I can still hardly believe that I was duped by my own country. I believe you jump from the window of the governor's office. When the jailbreak, uh, when the jailbreak was blamed on you, didn't you? Gosh, Vigil. I can't apologize enough. No, Governor. I don't believe you can. It won't change what's happened. Damn. <clears throat> and what can you tell us about the situation, Governor Caden? Ah... Uh... But you've already acknowledged that orders came from the prosecutor's office to arrange for the man's escape. There must have been some sort of negotiation. It's the only explanation. Aye, well, be that as it may, I didn't know nothing about it. The witness stand is no place for telling what you don't know for sure. I know that much, I do. Then I presume you also know this. Not telling what you do know is a criminal offense. No one seems to care, though. So you were just following orders, is that it? I'm afraid that won't absolve you of your guilt here. A man was still killed illegally, even if he was a condemned criminal. You may very, you may very well be found complicit in murder, Governor. <coughs> so that's what it's to be, is it? 
even with the threat of conviction, you won't break your you won't break your silence. Did you carry out the plan in its entirety? I... I did everything I could at the time. As you know, Genshin Asogi was shot dead in Logate Cemetery after the escape. Tell me, was that part of the plan too? My instructions were to, uh, were to deal with getting the jock out of the jail and nothing more. I can't tell you anything about what happened after that, only... Personally, I believe his death was the last part of the plan. Oh shit. Oh shit. Vigil, what do you gotta say? Mr. Vigil, is something wrong? Oh, this man's swinging, bruh. Ugh. Ugh. Yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? <coughs> He's saluting now? Salute! What is it? Some sort of Barclay convention? What Governor Caden was just saying seemed to upset you. Did it bring up something to mind, perhaps? For the last ten years, I've completely blotted out the memories of that, of that time from my mind. I was betrayed by my superiors in the name of my country. Just as my father was betrayed, it seems. <coughs> but you see, thinking back now, I really can't imagine that the shooting of Mr. Osogi in the cemetery was ever part of the plan. What makes you think that? Well, it just doesn't make sense, does it? To make the man admit to his crime to crimes he didn't commit with the promise of the jailbreak only to kill him in the end. That's treachery of the worst kind. But the point is, if the intention was always to betray him, why would there be any need for all the uh, chicaneries of an escape. Ah. Yes, that's quite true. Whoever negotiated with Asogi never intended to keep his or her end of the bargain. It would have been far simpler to just to let the man be executed in prison as dictated by his sentence. It all happened in that vast chamber of secrets that is Barclay, behind the high prison walls. I suppose nobody knows what really went on in, in the, in the ex execution room now. Yes, it's an unsettling mystery, certainly. Truth be told, there is a wee matter that's never quite made sense to me. <clears throat> if you believe there was some kind of negotiation behind the jailbreak between Asogi and, and the body at the top, doesn't quite made, made uh, doesn't quite add up, does it? Governor Caden, I must insist that you explain these doubts you have by amending your formal testimony. Yes, I, I go on then. It seems to me that the Japanese fella didn't have anything to bargain with. Uh, what about the papers though? Didn't he say like that that was his uh, last weapon or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, Mr. Osogi has described it as the only weapon I have left. Yeah, he had this. Let's fucking go. Confessing under oath to murders he didn't commit on a verbal assurance of, a, of later being broken out of prison. Genshin Osogi was taking an, incre an, an incredibly risky gamble. Very true. There was nothing to stop the British uh, breaking their word and executing him behind closed doors anyway. Under normal circumstances, no man would stake his life on a gentleman's agreement like that.
which means that Asogi must have had a trump card. Something that guaranteed he wouldn't be betrayed. Something that guaranteed, uh, something, some kind of weapon. Ah, the fellow couldn't possibly have had anything like that. But you know that he did, Governor. The Asogi Papers. The name given to the last will and testament of Genshin Asogi. Duh. It turns out that Mr. Asogi was hiding his will in his cell at Barclay. Chief Warder Vigil caught him with, with it one day. You. You squeal, did you, you wee rat? Didn't I not... Did I not tell you to keep that a secret? You. You can't touch me now. Gah! When Mr. Vigil caught sight of that will behind bars of the convict's cell, Mr. Asogi pleaded with the warder. Alright then, but what's on that paper? The last will and te a last will and testament. This will is the only weapon I have left now. Oh, a weapon? And after the convict had been killed following the elaborate pretense of the jailbreak, that document mysteriously disappeared, didn't it? What? Well, yes, all the prison warders searched through the belongings, belongings in his cell, but... That will was just nowhere to be found. As I understand it, an exhaustive search was made for the document, which became known as the Asogi Papers. Governor Caden, I believe you ordered your prison staff to find it, uh, find it at all costs, didn't you? D Would I be right in saying that you knew? You knew that the so-called Asogi Papers had the, uh, had the potential to make great waves somehow. D what the blazes are you blethering about? The, the will was found right and proper in the fella's cell where I said it would be. <laughs> but how can that be? Where in his cell? We all searched the place from top to bottom. Well, you didn't do a proper job, you, you peely wally galoot. You, you can't criticize me now. I showed it to you before, didn't I know? Didn't I? You, young lawyer? Yes, you did. I have the document here. It's written in Japanese and reads, The Last Will and Testament of Genshin Asogi. Which means, everything is as it should be. Not quite, my lord. You see, there's an undeniable inconsistency here. What? What inconsistency? Mr. Asogi described this document as the only weapon he had left. And yet, this will contains nothing of significance at all. Nothing would have given the convict any leverage. Uh, are you suggesting, my learned friend, that the last will and testament stored at Barclay Prison all these years is actually a fake? What? As clearly as has clearly been demonstrated already, what went on at Barclay Prison was far from above board. They, they faked his fucking will and his last will and testament. Wow. That last vilification by the defense was an affront to the entire British legal system. This absurd notion of a weapon is something for which we have only the former chief warder's word. The man could have easily been lying, or at the very least sorely mistaken. Well, no, I, I definitely heard him say that, I swear. Clearly, we need to get to the bottom of this. We need to know exactly what happened with these so-called Asogi papers. A waste of time. If the will was a fig, where is the real document? Mr. Vigil was stabbed in the back by the judiciary ten years ago. He lost everything. Very nearly lost his own life. And now you're going to do it again. You're ready to brand him a liar and turn your back on him without even letting him defend himself. It's clear that Barclay Prison is hiding something. It's clear that the jailbreak was masterminded by someone in the prosecutor's office. It's clear that some illicit negotiations took place. Is your lordship just going to gloss over these obvious and reprehensible facts? What did you say? 
we should hear more from the chief warder. Let it have him testify again. The trial must go on. The man's voice must be heard. It would seem that a vocal few here are utterly blind to the truth. Very well then. Let the witness testify again. Tell the court you, uh, what you think you saw of the victim's last will and testament. Yes, my lord. As the warder responsible for condemned convicts, I attended to Mr. Asogi and kept watch over his cell. The night after he was found guilty in court, he was doing something with that it will in his cell. We turned the cell inside out looking for it after the execution, but to no avail. I only found out about the Asogi papers when a directive came telling me to impound them. The document was in the folds of the fellow's robes that was left in his cell. A kimono, I think it's called. In his kimono? Th that's a lie. We searched every inch of the man's cell. We looked through all his clothes. It can't be true. Were well, you not satisfied to call me a liar the ones, eh? You wee whack finger. Ugh. There's, no, there's nothing you can do about it now. You don't have any hold over me anymore. What the hell? Other than the hold you'd like to take on my cravat, of course. Is that what you're going to do, is it? Are you going to give me a good shake again? Or are you too scared? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Little and large. What a double act. We compiled with a- uh, with, We complied with Asogi's will as far as, as was possible. All his personal effects were delivered to his family home in Japan. As a, as a courtesy to the homeland of the most notorious killer our country has ever seen. And we were much obliged. I can confirm that all of my father's belongings arrived safely. Aye. And you cannot deny the handwriting is that of your old man, eh? Yes. There's no mistaking it. That There's no mistaking that it's my father's brushwork. Really? And this last will and testament was the man's last weapon, was it? I think we can safely assume that the convict was merely prattling, knowing that his end was nigh. So, counsel for the defense, your cross-examination, please. Yes, my lord. Mata. So, would that mean that York, you conversed with Mr. Asogi? Yes, yeah, certainly. Though there was precious little time before his execution was due. He was remarkably calm, considering his days were very much numbered. In all honesty, he really didn't strike one as a man of a uh, man capable of mass murder. Yet he confessed in full to the crimes. I know. That's why I felt compelled to ask him one day. I can still recall his reply. I'm guilty of the unfor uh, I'm guilty of the unforgivable crime of ending another man's another human's life. Yes. But he was so tranquil and intelligent. It put me in, in mind of an Eastern holy man. And what about the will you saw him with? What can you tell us about that? It was the beginning of all the drama. I remember it very clearly. Yes. And he pleaded with you not to report him, didn't he? Yes, that's right. And like the blamp vampire you are, you didn't tell me. A blatant breach of trust, that was. I could see that the man was had a noble spirit. I found myself wanting to treat him accordingly. But according to what you told us two days ago, 
the convict had been strictly forbidden from having any writing materials whatsoever. Yes, you're quite right. So when exactly, w uh, so when exactly was the will pen? I was the I was before the man was remanded in Barclay, obviously. Yeah, yes, at the prosecutor's office under supervision of the relevant authorities. I personally instructed Osogi to make a will for the benefit of his family in his homeland. In that case, why was it found in his cell? What? What do you mean by that? Well, if it was penned at the prosecutor's office, you would have expected that it would remain there for safekeeping, surely. Duh. It's curious. There doesn't seem to be any obvious explanation for why it was subsequently found in the convict's cell. Oh, well, the defense makes an astute, an astute point. Well, Governor? A prison governor can be explained to know the inner workings of the prosecutor's office. In that case, Lord Strongheart, perhaps you can shed some light on the matter. I'm unable to offer an explanation here, and of course you're not. Of course you're not able. I would have to consult with the, with the notary responsible for the will at the time. The fact that my father's will was discovered in his cell is clearly inconsistent with what was expected. I want to know why. Another inexplicable mystery, then. Well, um, the thing is about that will. It was the governor who ordered the search uh, for the, uh, the search for the will, as I understand it. Is that right? Yes. And when I reported back that we couldn't find it, he grabbed me by the cravat and said, "It can have been it can have disappeared completely in my face." Well, well, it's doing to the governor to keep everybody working as hard as it should. I think the governor needs a wee taste of his own medicine, Mr. Narahoto. The point is, is that it was clearly considered a very important document, wasn't it? But it proved to impossible to find. That's right. Then before I knew it, it was in the morning paper. That blood-curdling article. The executed mass murderer who had risen from the dead. Oh, you... you mean... The article based on Mr. Drebber's experience in Lowgate Cemetery. Yes, that was it. The day after I'd read that news, I was summoned to the court governor's office. And that's when the awful accusation was made. That you aided Genshin Asogi to escape from the prison, resulting in your immediate uh, dismissal. I'm afraid I... I really don't remember anything after that. As the governor of the prison, I... I had no choice. I couldn't have done anything else. And that directive came from the same source as the one instructing you for, about the jailbreak. Aye. From the top levels of the, of the prosecutor's office. What name was on it? I didn't know before and I didn't know now. All I can tell you is that my orders were to do everything in my power to find that document. The director said it had to be somewhere inside the fella's cell. Document? Was that the wording? Document, not will? Aye, that's what it said. Am I clutching at straws here? I just wonder if it was really Genshin Asogi's last will and testament that was that the sender of the of that directive was after, of that directive was after. 
Continue with your testimony then, witness. Hmm. In Mr. Osogi's kimono. Aye, he brought he brought with him when he was locked up. Yes, he was permitted to have his personal effects with him during his incarceration, I understand. That's right. He was granted as much freedom as possible during the few days before his execution. Indeed, he had a number of items of personal significance, I remember. He was very reluctant to part with them. Some books, that kimono, his sword... His sword? Karma, the famous sword of the Asogi clan. It bears the soul of my family. Uh, I don't doubt it, but it, I, was, I wasn't really getting at that. Forget it about being the soul of the clan. Could the man have had a more obvious weapon? Have some respect, Ryunosuke. Respectful silence? The warders carry firearms at all times, and in inmates were, have shackles around their ankles. It couldn't have hurt anybody with that thing. Still, he was allowed a sword, but not, but no writing materials. I. <clears throat> he wrote that will before he came to stay with us at Barclay. You see, Doctor Mikotoba has a was asked to bring the necessary Japanese writing implements to the pr prosecutor's office. A Suzuri inkstone, black sumi, uh, sumi ink, and some Hanshi rice paper, no doubt. I was present when he wrote it, but I'm sorry to say, the letters just look like a squirming mass of jet black earth... earthworms to me? Are you feeling faint, Mr. Vigil? This man... Mr. Vigil! Sir! It was Scarlet, sir! What? <laughs> what? Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to blurt it out like that. Less swaying and more explaining would be helpful. It's something about the testimony we just heard. Is it something about the testimony we just heard? Have you recalled something of importance? Something of importance? Possibly, or possibly not. I'm unable to tell which way he's leaning, I'm afraid. My lord, the defense asked that Mr. Vigil be permitted to supplement his testimony. With this possible, possibly or possibly not important detail. Permission granted. Go ahead, Mr. Vigil. Yes, it was Scarlet. As I remember it, the document was written in Scarlet ink, but perhaps I'm mistaken. Uh, the last one tests him against an Asogi that which means... It doesn't say that it was... I mean, in, in the picture it looks like it's black ink. So, that's the inconsistency? Let me try it. Fuck! Damn it. Okay, so it's not that. Red ink, or scarlet ink, I should say. Hmm. If I remember correctly, didn't... Someone had... Scarlet ink on their fingers. I remember that detail. Was it Clint? Ah, there we go. I thought I, re I remember reading this. 
Recent scarlet ink stains visible on the little and ring fingers of the right hand, but no document in corresponding ink was found. Let's fucking go. It's this. Let's fucking go. Scarlet colored ink, uh, scarlet colored writing is what you said you thought you saw. Mr. Vigil. And I believe that's exactly what you did see. What? No, you have no evidence to say that. Have a look at this report. That's my brother's autopsy report. Yes, and there's something in here that's bothered me since I first read it. It states that scarlet colored ink stains were noted on the fingers of the victim's right hand. Nice. <laughs> yes, so it does. T scarlet ink? Now, I'm not familiar with the habits of the British uh, aristocracy, I freely admit. But I would hazard a guess they don't go all around with ink stains with their finger on their fingertips, do they? Your wit is not appreciated. My brother was a well-bred and fastidious man. Should, should Ink have sullied his fingertips, he would have cleaned them immediately. What is your point, Counsel? My point is this. Whatever Lord Clink Van Zeeks was uh, writing in that unusually colored ink, it must have been directly before his death. Because he died before he had the opportunity to clean his hand. What? I remember something troubled me at the time. At the scene, the lid of my brother's inkwell was open. But Clint was punctuous, uh, punctilious about such things. It seemed unusual. And no document penned in the color of the ink was, uh, in the inkwell, uh, that was in the inkwell was ever found. So the document had disappeared. Are you suggesting? That the document my father had in his hand that night in his cell was the same document that Lord Clint Van Zeeks was writing moments before his death. Then, it was... If Mr. Vigil's testimony is to be believed, it can only mean that, yes. Mr. Vigil. Sir! When you spotted Mr. Osogi with, do with the document in his cell, his precise wor uh, words were as follows, were they not? All right, then. But what's on that paper? A last will and testament. This will is the only weapon I have left now. Uh, uh, a last will and testament. Uh. If the conversation really did go as Mr. Vigil says... It wasn't Genshin Asogi's last will and testament. It was fucking Clint's. What the f- And then what we know now completely changes the meaning of what Mr. Osogi said. You really think? Mr. Vigil did indeed see the convict with a will, but it wasn't a, uh, that of Genshin Osogi. It was the last will and testament of Lord Clint Van Zeeks. What? Oh, Richard with the eyes, bro. <laughs> this, this is madness. My brother's last will and testament? That would mean that he had chosen to die. That is what it would mean, yes. No, impossible. That is utterly out of the question. Lord Van Zeeks. Clint was pursuing the professor. It consumed him day and night. Whatever happened, he would never he would never have abandoned his investigation before its conclusion. Never! He wouldn't rest until the job was done, until the killer was caught. The idea that he would willingly accept his own death, it's obscene. And yet, we can be sure that he was writing his will uh, moments before his death. And that Genshin Asogi came to be in possession of that document. So what could that, what could the will possibly have contained? Clearly something that couldn't be made public under any circumstances whatsoever. Because armed with that document, my father was able to negotiate with the judiciary for his life. It was something so damning that it prompted the powers that be to enact that daring jailbreak plot. Yes. There can be no question that the will contained information of the utmost secrecy. Information of the utmost secrecy.
Duh! No, it, it couldn't be. I've heard more than enough. Pursuing this notion of a phantom will, will uh, of a phantom will nobody can attest to have seen having seen serves absolutely no purpose. Ah, uh, it seems to be the truth if you're trying to put a block on it, sir. Sir? No, my lord. That's unacceptable. What did you say, counsel? The last will and testament that Genshin Asogi had in his possession was that of Clint Van Zeeks, or Lord Clint Van Zeeks. All the testimony and evidence presented to the court has logically led us to, the, to that as a possibility. We have a duty to pursue the line of reasoning to its conclusion. Sir? Sir? But with no possible means of knowing the contents of the document, there is no line of reasoning to pursue. A reason why Lord Clint Van Zeeks, a man of high noble standing, would have chosen death. Information so secret people in the judiciary would be willing to negotiate the jailbreak of a condemned killer. The only explanation that fits the, these, those facts is an unthinkable truth that absolutely uh, that turns absolutely everything on its head. But it's just too hideous. Mr. Naruhoto, however difficult the situation might become, you're, you work with your client in pursuit of the truth. That's what you resolved to do when you entered the courtroom this morning, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Sato. So hold your head, your head up. So hold your head high and keep soldiering on. Yeah, you're right. Ten years ago, in his final moments, Lord Clint Van Zeeks left behind a will. A will that Genshin Asogi was able to use as a weapon to negotiate his escape from prison. In all probability, the details of the will were related to the professor case. The defense's last statement is mere conjecture. What are you getting at, man? Ryunosuke? As soon as these words come out of my mouth, there's no going back. I believe that the last will and testament of Lord Clint Van Zeeks was in fact... It was a report! An accusation? A confession? Because if it, if it was something that absolutely had to be kept a secret, a report doesn't make sense. An accusation towards somebody else, maybe. But what was he confessing to? That he... I mean, if it was something so monumental that, like they're saying, it had to have been something like... Um... It have to. It had to have been like something relating to the professor case, obviously. But a confession about what, though? That's the thing. I mean, I guess confession makes the most sense, in terms of it being a big secret. A confession about his mom? <laughs> What's up, Rob? I'm gonna go with confession, just to see, see if I'm right. Confession? Let's fucking go, the music stopped. No way. What is the confession? Spell it out to me. You can do this, Mr. Naruhoto. I believe that what Lord Clint Van Zeeks actually penned that day was a confession. A, a confession? Regarding the mass murderer known as the Professor and his true identity. True identity? Enough. Enough, Counsel. What are you saying? Do you even realize... A confession about the true identity of the pro 
No fucking way, bro! No way! Clint, what is the was the professor? Richard Richard said what? Rob said Clint is the professor. Dero said the fuck. Uh, that would mean no fucking w how or why or why did he, would he even do that? Lord Van Zeeks, I appreciate this must be hard uh, to take in, but it's the only explanation that fits. The killer that terrorized London a decade ago and became known as the Professor. The man believed to have murdered five members of the uh, aristocracy. Wasn't Genshin Asogi at all. No, you can't be suggesting. It was in fact the man believed to have been the fifth victim. Lord Clint Van Zeeks himself. Ugh. Ah! It's finally open, is it? Pandora's box. So of course Strongheart knew that then. Oh my god. Six, he was a paragon of justice. Yeah, he had like an image. But he was actually a mass murderer. But that's the thing though, like why was he killing... The other members of the aristocracy, though. Cat's out of the bag. Uh, my brother. But this is too awful. Poor Lord Van Zeeks. I wonder, though. Did he never suspect? Mr. Narahodo? Lord Barrett... Lord Barrett Van Zeeks is a brilliant prosecutor. Is it conceivable that he didn't realize what his older brother really was? Order! Order! Order in the court! Lord Van Zeeks. <laughs> the professor made use of an enormous hound as his murder weapon. Tell me, did your brother own a dog? Oh. He's like, fuck. Yes, he did. <laughs> Damn it, bro. It really was his brother. What the fuck? Balmung. He was well no he was a well known hunting dog. People called him a giant. And he was ri Wait, I got a glizzy emo? Oh, sh the glizzies, bro? Throw them glizzies in the chat, bro. I don't believe this. When my when my brother would go hunting in the forest of, uh, of the grounds behind the house, he always took Balmung. After Clint's death, the creature passed away too. Almost as if he were following his master. He was a magnificent hunting dog. Worthy of the jewel-studded collar around his neck, bro. Oh my... And that's the same collar. Oh my god. A jewel-studded collar? That's right. Though sadly, some years ago now, it was stolen by a thief who broke into the house one night. A jewel studded call it all comes together. Bro, this game's finale, bro, is bringing everything together, bro. Holy shit, they're bringing the collar into this. Everything is coming together. <laughs> Stolen by a thief. It so happens that myself and my colleagues have come across such a collar during our time in London. How could you? There was an old emblem attached to the, to the collar too, made of pure gold. It was topped with a small crown and bore an, an ornate capital uh, B. All for the dog's name, Balmung. What? An emblem bearing the initial B? Oh my, you know it? It's the insignia of the Baskerville family. Oh, never mind. It's for the Baskerville family. What? what The Baskerville? Why is that name coming up now? Baskerville is the family name of my late brother's widow. 
the Hound of the Baskervilles, which is tied to the story that Iris wrote. Oh my god, and it tied to the last case of the first game. Jesus Christ. That pure gold emblem was an heirloom which Clint acquired upon their marriage. There can be no doubt. The basketball family? <laughs> the collar you described was Balmond's. The family insignia, insignia of Lord Van, uh, Van Zeke's widow. Uh, Lord Clint Van Zeke's widow. There was a considerable amount of blood on the collar when we saw it. Since we know the dog was used for hunting, it could have been used from it could have been from its quarry, of course. But it could have even but it could equally have been from human prey. So it is true then. Ken Van Zeeks really was the professor. Impossible! These Japanese are making it up but to exonerate their own. So in fact, the person responsible for these murders of nobles and royals was a noble himself. And that threatened to be an enormous scandal, uh, and uh, that threatened to be an enormous scandal that would be irre irrevocably destabil uh, that would irrevo uh, that would irrevo irrevocably destabilize British society. If I can learn to read, my father knew that and was using it to negotiate his way out of the unjust charges brought against him. But at the very last hour, those who and those he bargained with betrayed him, slaying him mercilessly on foreign soil. Well, can you deny it, Lord Strongheart? Ten years have passed. And now, the six million inhabitants of our great capital rest easy believing that justice was done. That... Though his anonymity remains, the diabolical murderer was caught and executed. Very well then. You may have the truth. Oh shit, did we beat him? Oh, or did we win the game? Tell me then. Tell me what Clint really was. Lord Clint Van Zeeks was too pure of heart. When he became a prosecutor and went in pursuit of the black roots of crime, he drove himself into a corner. He came to the uncomfortable realization that to fight the most fiendish of criminals requires one to become even more fiendish oneself. He became a monster to fight the monsters of the world? Clint. There's the pawnbrokers. The 19th century was a truly miraculous hundred years for Great Britain, and indeed the whole world. New industry, new technology, and with the birth of the, of the Metropolitan Police Service, new law and order. But these dazzling new developments meant ever deeper shadows were cast on society. Water sullied by factories, air thick with noxious fumes and crime, growing daily to fill the darkness. Lord Clint Van Zeeks made, his, made it his mission to combat that darkness, but as time went on, it slowly ate at his soul, until eventually, he was consumed. It's ironic, really, and somewhat surprising, that the truth has once again been unearthed by a Japanese. Once again? What do you mean? Ten years ago, your father, Genshin Asogi, turned up at my office one night. The professor. Yes, beyond all shadow of doubt. We must issue a warrant to search his house at once. Don't be absurd. The man comes from one of our own one of our country's most illustrious families. He's a paragon of justice here in the capital. Yes, that's the point. That's why none of you British can see it. He's using his noble status as a diversion whilst he commits whilst he commits these atrocious crimes behind the scenes. Do you have evidence? None did nothing definitive as yet, but he keeps an enormous savage hound on the estate. We need the full support of the judiciary for this. We're up against a member of the aristocracy. 
or a large family estate has a fierce guard dog. You should know that's commonplace here in Britain. I'm sorry, but I can't possibly put Scotland Yard onto this based on the tenuous accusation of a visiting student. So I turned down Osogi's plea, and as a result, he took it upon himself to visit the Van Zeke's mansion on his own. We can only imagine now what happened between the two men. Though we know the outcome, of course, Lord Clint Van Zeke's parish. I don't believe this. So, in actual fact, Kazuma-sama's father did. He made the late Lord Van Zeke's meet the same fate. He put a permanent end to the prosecutor, uh, to the professor killings, by taking the drastic measure of ending the per uh, the perpetrator's life. Jesus. As soon as I heard, I hurried to the mansion. When I arrived, it was easy to grasp what had happened. And what about the will? Asogi must have already taken it. Nothing of that nature was found at the scene. We had no idea of the existence of such a document at the time. At that time. Hmm. I was the only person who knew of the true identity of the professor. So, I resolved to keep it a secret and to guard the secret to the bitter end. S so you're admitting to it? That you were behind it all? It was you, then, who pinned the crimes on my father. I did what needed to be done in order to protect the law and order of the British Empire. Even if it meant employing an unforgivable employing an unforgivable ruse. Then it was you who arranged this fabricated evidence. I ordered that detective to take care of it, whilst keeping the truth from him, naturally. Gregson? Obviously, he opposed me at first. Are you off your rocker? We can't do something like that. There's no question that it was Asogi who murdered Lord Van Zeeks. The house staff have made statements that they saw the man running from the mansion that night. Guess, well, I've no doubt it was that Japanese fella. But we've got no shred of conclusive evidence against the man. And worse than that, he doesn't keep a dog. We're short of a murder weapon to boot. And we're short on time, Gregson. We must put a stop to this man's rampage, for the good of the country. So we'll use whatever means necessary. Do I make myself clear, detective? Blimey. So that night, ten years ago, when I was attacked by those thugs in the back streets, and Genshin's ring was taken, that was him, was it? That was Gregson and some hired help? Then the Gregson robbed... Genshin's... Oh my... Bro... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Then the detective handed the stolen ring to Dr. Wilson, who feigned its discovery from the victim's stomach during the auto that autopsy. And in the light of that decisive evidence, Mr. Osogi was found guilty of the, of the charges brought against him. However, behind the scenes, he had actually struck a deal with his accusers, in which he agreed to silently accept the charges. But I just don't believe that part. As far as I knew the man, my father despised such, such underhanded dealings. It was extremely easy to make him comply. You see, he had one crippling weakness. What, what weakness? Isn't it obvious? You, Kazuma Sogi. M me Perhaps you have no desire to return to your homeland, Asogi. What? Though I hear you have a 14-year-old son. I'll agree to cooperate and accept my your guilt without contention, and you will see Japan and your son again. You scoundrel! 
Whether you choose wisely or not, it will be a close trial by order of Her Majesty. So whatever rash claims you might make in court, we'll have no trouble we'll have no trouble in stifling them. There's only one outcome for you, Asogi. The gallows. Don't forget that I still have a weapon at my disposal. A document revealing a truth that I know. That I know you're desperate to keep hidden. Yes, I it hadn't escaped my mind. Which is the only reason I'm willing to bargain with you. I only want to protect this country's law and order, you understand. So, what's it to be, Yosogi? Ka Kazuma. Damn. He did it for me. And as I told him at the time, my motive was simply to protect Britain from the damage the truth would do. To protect this country's law and order at any cost. Jesus Christ. I've never dared let myself even consider this possibility until now. But in the light of all of this, Treachery, I have to ask. The mastermind behind the Reaper of the Bailey. Was it you, Lord Mayo Strongheart? A rather brilliant idea, wouldn't you say? Lord Barak Van, Ze Bar Van Zeeks? I knew it, bro. I knew this man was the Reaper. That the spirit of your late brother, your late brother, the, that paragon of justice, would return to reap justice for his sibling. Could there be a more appetizing tale for London's masses, I ask you? What? What brazen? I knew you'd play the part to perfection, but your role really wasn't that of some embodiment of death. No, you were London's guardian angel. An angel with bloody hands? I think not. Those who had cooperated with me already were only too happy to participate in my plan. Inspector Gregson, Dr. Wilson. My minions worked tirelessly to ensure that the finger of guilt could never come to rest on you. It's all thanks to them that you were exalted as the demigod of the Reaper became. But Dr. Wilson left Britain four years ago, when he was invited to work in Japan. That's right. So I had to employ the services of his young protege after that. Dr. Courtney Scythe. Dr. Scythe. So what with the execution of the professor and the subsequent reign of the Reaper of the Bailey, I've successfully safeguarded law and order in our mighty capital for the past decade. That is everything. My lords, ladies, and gentlemen, I do hereby confess it was I who sired the concept of the Reaper. However, let me say in my defense, it was all for the preservation of law and order across the Empire. Lord Strongheart did it? An unforgivable, col unforgivable collection of crimes, but still, all those, all those who died at the Reaper's hand were rotten to the core anyway. It was all in aid of keeping London safe. There is no one left now who can reveal the precise truth of what happened ten years ago. Therefore, that this trial can go no further. Now, I would like to entreat all those present. Beyond these four walls, nobody need to know the truth. Even Her Majesty must be protected from this. I trust you all appreciate the importance of my request. It is, of course, the good for the good of the country. Can, can he do this? Can the trial really end now? I have one last question for the accused Lord Van Zeeks. What? Of course, I know that you're highly you're a, a highly accomplished prosecutor, so I find it hard to believe that you didn't have any doubts at all. 
that you never suspected your older brother. Yes, the same thought occurred to me. It was only once, but yes, I couldn't say that I never had any, uh, I never had my doubts. My brother's sense of justice was extremely strong, perhaps too strong, I observe. At, this, at that time, there were members... Yeah, this is good. What's the name of this? At that time, there were members of the aristocracy who were bleeding the country dry for their own gain. And since they were nobles, they were untouchable. For my brother, it was a source of great turmoil. And coincidentally, at, that, at the same time, the professor began his terrifying reign. During the time of, his, of the professor's killings, my brother did not appear to be himself. And that made you suspect? Yes. But it was only once. Nope, not more. Only once. Really? Clint wasn't the culprit. That was my conclusion at the time. And I still believe that now. The Great Gateway to the Truth? I'm gonna need to add that to my playlist. Do you have any evidence to support that idea? The third victim was the Lord Chief Justice at the time. It was he who had rec it was he who had recognized my brother's potential and trained him as a prosecutor. No matter what the circumstances, it's unthinkable that my brother could have killed his friend and mentor. That will do. I, neither Clint Van Zeeks nor Genshin Isogi still walk this earth. However much we debate this matter now, we cannot hope to reach a conclusion. But... There are only two ex extant pieces of evidence fr from the time. The woebegone ring that acted as the incriminating evidence to condemn Genshin Isogi and the three-page last will and testament penned in black ink and left by the man. Wait a minute, wasn't it? It's only two pages. Hmm. And the, and the three-page last will and testament penned in black ink and left behind by the man. The wretched truth of what happened is exactly as, I've, as I have explained. Later today, I will present myself at the Ministry of Justice for whatever sanction is deemed appropriate. That is all. Court is adjourned. Objection? Let's go! <laughs> of course, it wouldn't be an Ace Attorney game if you didn't have the last minute objection. Thank you, Cosmo. Me. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have made this 11th hour discovery. What discovery? My lord, I'm afraid I must insist the trial continues. I beg your pardon. As the court has been reminded today already, we must stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth. And to that end, one particular statement made by somebody in this courtroom moments ago, it was Strongheart. Revealed a very subtle contradiction. What contradiction? But all I did is was all I did was ask the accused one simple question. Well, it began with Lord Van Zeeks and his recollection about his brother, but Lord Strongheart didn't permit the defendant to speak at length. I merely pointed out that we draw no further useful conclude that we can draw no further useful conclusions here. So where on earth is this, is the contradiction? One of them definitely just said something contradictory. It's time to identify who. Strongheart. It was Lord Strongheart, I'm sure of it. He, something he said was slightly off. Come on, Ryonosuke. Think back over his words. Find the problem. The ring. 
and the three page last will and testament. It was only two pages. Lord Strongheart, would you care to explain? Explain what, Council? Among the statements you made just a few moments ago, something you said was inconsistent with a certain piece of evidence we have. Inconsistent? And whilst an inconsistency remains, the defense has a right to pursue an explanation. Ryonosuke, what? Let me warn you about the statement you are making, Council. They are... they may very well prove fatal. You claim my words contain a contradiction with... with which piece of evidence I ask you. The Asogi Papers. This here is the will left behind by Mr. Asogi. The two-paged will. What? Yet moments ago, your precise words were... The three-page last will and testament. Duh! Could it be that originally... There were... there was a third page? For a moment, I thought perhaps you'd identified something worthwhile. But it's a mere trifle, I see. A trifle? Governor Caden! Uh, what can I do for you, sir? You were present when the Japanese man penned his last will and testament? Aye! I was there for sure, I remember the black... Uh... Worm-like scrawls to this day! And... I'm quite certain, my lord... That there was a third page at the time. What? What? Only the first two pages were the actual will, though. If I might... Correctly, the third... Was a message to his lad back in Japan. For legal purposes, we required only his will. I wouldn't have wanted any uncomfortable words about Britain to get back to Japan, eh? So it was decided that the third page oughtn't have been sent. How dare you make that decision? I have the I, I had a right to know what it said. To hear my father's words uh, to hear my father's final words to me. The courtroom is no place for sentimentality, counsel. As it happens, I have the third pa page of the document with me here now. But my father's message, it will be given to you at the end of these proceedings. It'll be too late once the trial is over. We need to know what it says now. Even the slightest thing may give us a vital clue. My lord, the defense calls for Genshin Asogi's last words to, to his son to be read out loud before the court now. Your request is denied. The inevitable... The inevitable the, the inevitably maudlin words can be of no consequence now. The prosecution agrees. The court should know the content of that message. Every possible piece of evidence must be thoroughly examined. Very well then, Governor Caden. You will read the third page of the document for all present to hear. Yes, sir! Only, I should point out, my lord, that I can actually read... Worm language. <laughs> this beautiful handwriting. Shame on you, Barry. Oh! If I could be of assistance here, I would be happy to translate the words into English for the court. Father! You're still here, are you, Dr. Mikotoba? Naturally. I consider myself a member of the judiciary, albeit a lowly one. Though perhaps I should quietly withdraw after I've translated Genshin's message. Your cooperation is much appreciated. Kazuma, the truth is shrouded in darkness. A darkness only our clan's great sword can pierce. Mighty Karuma, twist thy head and watch them fall. All thy mortal foes. That's the message? That's the end of the message, it would seem. A haiku poem? Twist thy head. Father. What is Karuma? The name of the Asogi clan's famous sword. A razor-sharp blade known to all passed down for generations. It embodies the Japanese spirit. It's not known to me. It's the katana sword that was submitted as evidence earlier in these proceedings. 
the one worn by the prosecution counsel when he confronted Inspector Gregson. All these procrastinations are beginning to try my patience. Adjournment of this court is long overdue. I have been a, uh, I have been a, as the presiding judge, I have been a, as accommodating as possible of the will of the courtroom. However, despite all of that, no new information has come to light. In pursuit of justice, Lord Clint Van Zeeks tragically lost all sense of morality. When he murdered his former mentor, clearly he was already devoid of his normal faculties. How dare you! I refuse to believe that of my brother. Too much time has passed. We could not ever hope to know more than we do now. Especially since the alleged will that he penned in his final moments appears to have been lost forever. Lord Strongheart, you appear to be in something of a hurry to wrap things up. I wonder why. Gee, I wonder why. We've heard you state time and time again during these proceedings that everything you did was in the interest of protecting British law and order. And I stand by that. Without the Reaper, we could never have achieved the reduction in crime the capital has seen. What about Inspector Gregson then? And Dr. Wilson? They were no criminals. You used them to achieve your ends, and then you had them killed. However you dress it up, there was nothing fair or just about that. Lord Strongheart. What exactly is it that you're hiding? Dr. Mikotoba. You, were you not to quietly withdraw after the translation of your former associate's will? In this courtroom, no argument carries weight unless it is supported by evidence. And it would seem that the defense has no more evidence to present. In which case... I hereby order all discourse from these proceedings to be struck from the record. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> this is my last chance. Mr. Naruhoto. I have to present some decisive evidence now, or it's all over. Um, let me read that will again. Page three. This fucking guy, <laughs> Kazuma. The straight, the the truth is shrouded in darkness. A darkness only our clan's great sword can pierce. Mighty Karma, twist thy head and watch them fall. All thy mortal foes. I mean, I guess it has something to do with the sword, then, right? The head, so that would be this. I already seen that. Or is it the hilt? Aw, oh, shit. Mighty Karma, twist thy head and watch them fall. All thy mortal foes. That's the proper way to use the sword, is it? Maybe I should try it. It hurts my neck, that's the trouble. Um, Mr. Naruhoto, if I might make a suggestion? I think perhaps it doesn't mean your head. Oh! I once studied the history and development of the, of the katana some time ago. And as I'm sure you're probably aware, the sword's head is the part of... Uh, is the part at the very end of the hilt. It's written as head in Japanese, but it's pronounced as kashira, uh, kashira, I believe. Kashira. So Mr. Osoki's words really meant twist the butt of the hilt? You, you don't think. Oh my god. It was in the sword the whole time? Let me guess, that's Clint's fucking paperwork, bro, that he, that is his confession. Ah, look what's inside. It, is that a tightly wound uh, sheet of parchment? 
I fucking knew it, bro. Let's fucking go. Scarlet ink. It's written in scarlet ink. I pen this. Just examine the hilt again uh, for an achievement. I got you. I pen this, my last will and testament, in the final moments before my inevit inevitable uh, and willing death. This, this is it, isn't it? Mr. Naruhoto, look at the signature at the end. Clint Van Zeeks and the date. Ten years ago on that fateful night. So for ten years it's been silently concealed inside Karma, and nobody knew. The last will and testament of Lord Clint Van Zeeks. Wait, oh my goodness. Look at this. This is unbelievable. A trump card left behind by Genshin Osogi. This is what he meant by his weapon. Alright, so again. Perhaps the duties of the Osogi have actually called for such an inventiveness. Protecting great secrets, you mean? Those sorts of duties? Well, I couldn't believe that. Kazuma conducts himself like someone with the weight of his clan's long and noble history on his shoulders. A hey, Asogi clan appreciator, baby! I got the achievement. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna have to present that evidence right now. Wait, my lord. As it happens. Oh shit, bro! Overture to pursuit, baby! We are on the cusp of, of dealing this shit to him. Mm -mm. As it happens, the defense does have evidence to present. What? Don't be, bro. I, I love that they did this for the pursuit theme. Like they have like this like prelude, this prelude for. I wish like uh other Ace Attorney games have this. Hopefully for Ace Attorney 7, we'll see. Like you're on like the on the cusp of like discovering something or, or proving something. Oh my god, it's so good. Don't be absurd. That fire facts, bro. I just hit my microphone, my bad bro. It is fire, bro. There is nothing of re relevance remaining from the time. It's high time that you realize something. This is the omen theme, except it's towards the prosecutor instead of us. <laughs> it's high time that you realize something, my lord. This gentleman has an uncanny habit of producing evidence at the final hour that had escaped everyone's else, everyone else's attention. It is Ace Attorney, after all. Nonsense. What is it, Nirinosuke? What do you have? Hold on, let me be the protagonist right now. I dare say, the final decisive piece of evidence that will reveal the whole truth about this rotten tale. Uh, how can you... Decisive? Well, it would appear that there's no escaping it now, my lord. Let it be so, then. Present whatever you think you have that can settle this decade-old enigma, if you're capable. What exactly is this evidence that the defense claims to be so decisive? Hey! There is a single piece of evidence that it can clarify what really happened 10 years ago. The last will and testament of Lord Clint Van Seeks. Ha! A wonderfully astute observation, I'm sure. But in case it had escaped your notice, that document was lost long ago. <laughs> That's right, it was. Only. I have it right here, actually. Discovered just moments ago. I impossible! That can't be! Everything that's happened comes back to this will. This document is the key that will unlock the entire mystery. Hey! Uh, uh. Gah! Uh, he's looking. He's looking a little flustered now. 
my my brother's last will and testament. Where did you find that? It was rolled up inside this. Inside Karuma. That ultimate weapon Genshin Asogi obtained uh, has lain undisturbed in the hilt of this sword for all these years. Just waiting for the right time to emerge and reveal the truth. The signature and seal certainly look official. My god, it's true. It's my brother's handwriting. There can be no mistake. I forbid the contents of that document from being read aloud. Do you hear me? I strictly forbid- Hey, man. I'm gonna need you to shut the fuck up. You can't do that, my lord. This document could explain everything. That document can literally destroy the meaning of justice in this country. I demand that you hand it to me. At once! Why? What are you trying to hide? Could it be... That you already know what's written on this page? Done. Uh, what are you implying? Court is adjourned with, with, is adjourned with immediate effect. Clear the courtroom! Oh! The fucking boot, bro. Do that, my lord, and you'll suffer a fatal blow as Lord Chief Justice. I beg your pardon? Forcibly ending a trial without good reason? And not any trial, a closed tr trial by order of Her Majesty the Queen. To defy the monarch's will is treason. Uh, uh, uh. Lord Clint Van Ziegs really did pen a will that day exactly as the young man said. Read it out, now! We have a right to hear what's in that will. A right, and a duty. Well, well, my lord. It would rather appear as though proceedings aren't going, are going, aren't going to go quite as you'd hoped. You, you fools. Go ahead, Ryunosuke, read it. The prosecution gives its full support. Very well then. No. For God's sake. No! <laughs> Let me go ahead and read that bitch real quick. I pen this, my last will and testament, in the final moments before my inevitable and willing death. The hour is 11 p.m. and I sit at my writing desk in my office. My good friend, Nasogi, stands at my, sh stands at my shoulder. He has expressed his intent to invoke the dying ritual of the duel, and that I may depart this world with honor, an honor of which I am utterly undeserving. The Japanese are truly are a truly merciful people. Oh shit. I, Clint Van Zeeks, Lord of the Manor of the Van Zeeks estate, hereby confess to the following. I am the killer who has come to be known in society as the Professor, guilty of four counts of murder. I will not hear I will not hear discourse I will not hear discourse the corruption rife among the aristocracy, which is to me, as one of them, so apparent. However, six months ago I took the life of a member of the House of Lords at the heat part of the depravity. A demon who habitually sacrificed the common man to further his own interests. Abusing his uh, position of power. The law is impotent against such, uh, such vile avarice. Only a fellow demon can rid society of this menace. Oh shit. That demon was my quarry, upon whom I willingly set my great hound. But though I am a hunter of some e experience, I am a poor felon, it seems. My guilt was at once recognized by another and I became subject of his extortion. He held over me the threat of exposing my wicked crime to my beloved wife and brother. Under that threat, I have done this man's bidding for months now, killing those he demanded I kill. So he killed one person, and Strongheart found out and ordered him to kill more people. As I watched my former mentor perish before my eyes, at the jaws of the hound I commanded, and he told him to kill his mentor. Jesus. 
I realized that I had lost the last shred of decency within me and sunk to the level of a wild beast. What the fuck? There is no path back to the light. Be it I or my dear friend Asogi who dies this night, I am eternally damned. To my extortioner, male strongheart, may you feel the jaws of the beast at your throat every time you swallow. Then glizzies. Sorry, I had that. Why is he smiling? So now we know. Yes. Clint Van Zeeks was a murderer. But somebody was directing him and naming his victims. His extortioner, Lord Male Strongheart. It was you. I f this man, bro. Lord Strongheart. A moment ago. You claimed that what the court has just heard could destroy justice in this country. But you weren't trying to protect justice at all. You were... All you were trying to do was conceal the secret of your true nature and the countless lives you've sacrificed up till now. It just didn't make sense to me that the third victim, the Lord, the former Lord Chief Justice, was my brother's benefactor and a man of lofty principles. As I said, Clint had no possible reason to kill the man. But you did, didn't you? But you did, didn't you, Lord Strongheart? To eliminate the man who stood between you and the office you'd set your sights on. So you used your own hunting dog, Lord Clint Van Zeeks, to take him down. It had to be done. London's unsavory, unsavory shadows are deep, and the arm of the law of... This man is just deeming it... Bro, <laughs> he really is Damon Gant, bro. Oh my god. And the arm of the, of the law fails to reach their depths. Crime must be cut. Crime must be cut off at the roots. But the Lord Chief Justice at the time couldn't see that. He was weak. Lofty principles, you say? Tantamount to cowardice, if you ask me. Which is why I took his place. In order to fight the crime he was allowing to spread like wildfire. By murdering the man? The Reaper. The Professor. The name makes no difference. As I've explained countless times already, it was all done for the furtherance of law and order in London. Are you going to legitimize the murder of my father now too? Ah, Genshin Asogi. Well, that was unfortunate. I had fully intended to send him back to Japan as we'd agreed. I don't believe you. It was you, wasn't it? You killed him. No, it wasn't me who took your father's life. Then who? On the night following his mock execution, I went to Logate Cemetery at 3 in the morning with Jigoku. J Judge Jigoku? There had to be a collaborator on the Japanese side to manage Asogi's treatment after his uh, repatriation. Jigoku had fierce ambition. It made him easy to manipulate. Ten years ago, after he'd stood trial for the de destruction of the witness stand, I had words with him. When I told him the position of Minister of, Minister of Foreign Affairs could be his, he couldn't agree fast enough. Says Shiro. You fool. As you know, Asogi escaped the prison in a closed cas casket and was subsequently interred. We intended to dig him out. We intended to dig him out of his grave before he ran out of air. But sadly, all did not go to plan. Cause Drabber was there. There was an unexpected visitor to the cemetery with his own ideas of digging up graves. A man who witnessed what nobody was supposed to see. Enoch Drebber. Of course, I knew grave robbers frequented London cemeteries. But that grave on that particular night? Blast! The people found out the convict wasn't really executed. The scandal will rock the very foundations of the Empire. Th th then what do we do? Shoot him, Mr. Jigoku. Shoot Asogi at once. He can't live now that this has happened. He has to go. Oh my god. Oh, what are you talking about? You, you had an agreement. You promised him he could return to Japan. 
Everything has changed now. If the if the truth got out of because of this, both of us would be finished. Forever. Come on, Jigoku, do it! Pull the trigger! Damn, bro. You know, I always... I've been saying to pull the trigger for the past week and a half now, bro, but not like this, bro. Not like this. Come on, Jigoku. I mean, it, it shouldn't surprise me because he killed Gregson. But he actually killed Kazuma's father. God damn, bro. Shoot! Damn. What the fuck, man? Jigoku shot Asogi from the shadows. The grave robber was so close, the blood, the blood sprayed over his coat. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we gotta salute Genshin for real, bro. This man got fucked over so hard, bro. He fled as fast as his legs would carry him. Then Jigoku and I put Asoki's body back in the grave and from which he just emerged. When I later learned of the waxwork modeler's presence at the Sina as well, I made her swear to two things. Never to remove the professor's mask, and never to speak of the events of that night. Tuspel, Ma uh, Madam Tuspels. And with that, the secret was buried along with Mr. Sogi's corpse. So, now you know what really happened in, in Logate Cemetery that night. Jesus. It was Jugoku, your Japanese acquaintance, who killed Asogi in the end, you see. He claimed to be the man's friend, but when push came to shove, he pulled the trigger. Just before Mr. Jugoku left the courtroom earlier, he said that the Assassin Exchange proposal was a demand from his British counterpart, not a request. So you coerced him too, using what happened in the graveyard. By that time, Jigoku was the Minister of Foreign Affairs negotiating international treaties with Britain. You can imagine what would have happened if it came to light he'd murdered a compatriot ten years earlier. He would have lost everything. I merely reminded him, I merely reminded him of that. How do you sleep at night? These past ten years, I've fought tirelessly with the darker recesses of London's criminal underworld. This is, I mean, he's definitely Damon Gant, but I feel like this man is way worse than Damon Gant. Like, Damon Gant did some fucked up shit too, don't get me wrong. But this man was doing it for 10 years. Having people killed, uh, manipulating uh, Japan's foreign, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, manipulating... Kazuma, Van Zeeks, us uh, Genshin Asogi, even us, in a way. Like this man, like Damon Gant, I feel like maybe like that's why uh, Shu Takumi kind of used the archetype again because maybe like he wanted da like a Damon Gant kind of character but present throughout uh, the the games instead of just one case. This is fucking insane, man. These past 10 years, I've fought tirelessly with the darker recesses of London's criminal underworld. And I've used whatever means necessary to ensure that justice prevails and law and order reigns supreme. That couldn't be further from the truth. The fact is, you haven't fought crime at all. How dare you? I saved Clint Van Zeeks from dishonor and his death. Whilst behind the scenes, you systematically buried anyone who stood in your way. And then, you made my father take the blame. It was unavoidable. It was the only way to protect our justice system and public order. Let's not forget the others you had killed as well. Sending the defendant up as the Reaper to cover up the truth behind the murders of countless more. That's... Enough! 
Do you have any idea of the conniving that led to the acquittals of those wretched criminals? We have to fight fire with fire. Our courts can't function without a reaper. Can't you see all I've done for this country? This has been my struggle. You've done nothing. It's Lord Van Zeeks here who worked tirelessly and, and justly in court whilst enduring the disgrace of the Reaper name. And Inspector Gregson, fraught, fraught with anguish for having sullied his hands through a desire to do the right thing. Not to mention Genshin Asogi, who risked his life going, uh, going in pursuit of the truth you tried to hide. No, the darker recesses of London's underworld were largely filled by you. You little... Damn, that face. When will you get it through your thick skulls? It was all for queen and country. I'm tired of that. I'm tiring of that excuse. You've, consist you've consistently twisted the truth of your bargaining power to make others do your bidding. Nothing more. People who willingly twist the truth and coerce others have no right to call themselves part of the judiciary. I strongly suggest you don't ever talk about justice again. Don't ever bring up the name justice again. Damn. This is so fucking good. <laughs> this is so good, bro. Oh shit, he's doing the clap! Is he gonna go really fast? Oh shit! <laughs> well, well, dear me. Well, 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 dear me, my good fellows. Dear me. He's doing the Damon clap, bro. What the fuck? A well deserved round of applause, I think. For a, for a quite marvelous performance. What? What are you talking about? Those delightfully grave expressions that beautifully pronounced Quinn's English. Really? Our friends from the- Oh shit! <laughs> really, our friends from the Far East are quite the picture of industriousness! You fraud! Keep your mockery! Please don't misunderstand. It really is exactly as you've both said. What are you trying to ha- What are you trying to say? I have occupied the darker recesses of London's underworld and- How did you put it? done nothing I confess it's a little embarrassing to have it pointed out quite so starkly but yes I really have done nothing which means I can be indicted for nothing shut the fuck up bro what you bro you're not getting away with you're not getting away, away with this bro it's true Personally, I've committed no crime. I've merely been surrounded by fools who acted very rashly indeed. You can't get away with that. You've consistently preyed upon on, uh, on people's weaknesses. And what? Threatened them? Are you sure it wasn't just a bar? It wasn't just bargaining? Oh my God! Please don't this don't let this man get away. I would like to address all the good lords and ladies, uh, I would like to address all the good lords, ladies and gentlemen of the, ju of the judiciary here present. You all know of these darker recesses in our greater, in our great capital, and deep down I believe you also know that to fight those who dwell there requires at least some of us to occupy the darkness ourselves. So let me appeal to your good sense now. Consider the situation with me. If this catalog of horrifying revelations were to become common knowledge among the six million inhabitants of London, what might happen? To learn that the infamous murderer of royals and nobles was a respected member of the aristocracy, er, uh, aristocracy himself. That evidence was fabricated in, in the scapegoat's trial amid a secret and secret negotiations with prosecutors to effect a jailbreak? That the Reaper of the Bailey was an organized group of assassins managed by a Scotland Yard inspector? And finally, 
that it was all masterminded by the Lord Chief Justice himself. If the general public of Britain knew the truth, all faith in the police and prosecutor's office would be completely lost, without doubt. Public order in the capital would completely break down. We'd be cast back into the lawless days of the last century. Precisely. It was, it was as it was a hundred years ago, when one in ten of the population were criminals. Think of what we've accomplished since then. A public policing force, a comprehensive set of laws. And if we want to continue to protect this new era of law and order, I say again, we must at times occupy the darkness ourselves. We have successfully identified and, and apprehended the man responsible for taking Inspector Gregson's life. That is all that was expected of this trial. All these other matters have, that have been discussed will be eliminated from the minutes, uh, from the minutes of these proceedings, in the interest of preserving law and order, and to protect Her Majesty the Queen, of course. Well, my lords, and, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, what say you? He has a point. The things Lord Strongheart has done are quite unforgivable. But on the other hand, oh my god, isn't it our duty to maintain law and order in the capital? We can't deny that the threat of the Reaper over the years has done wonders for the crime rate. These motherfuckers, bro, and by fair means are foul, that's all thanks to Lord Strongheart. They're really chanting this man's name, bro, what? Oh my god. Uh are you hearing this? This is the will of the British judici uh, Judiciary? For your rousing response, friends, I express my heartfelt gratitude. Therefore, in accordance with the overwhelming wishes of the court, the record shall be erased. You have to respect the man's ability to turn a situation into his favor. Lord Strongheart really is a master. Uh, really is a master of manipulation. You've conclusively proven his guilt, yet still he remains. He manages to evade justice. I just, I just don't know what we can do. Ryunosuke, it looks like the trial really is going to come to an end. I'm almost out of options. I think there's really only one path left to left open to me. Raise an objection? Wait a minute. Do we still have that? Oh, we do. I mean... We already proved everything and he told us everything. So if this isn't a dead end, I don't know what is. I'm gonna use evidence. Yes, as I know only too well, the only thing that carries any weight in court. Oh shit! What the fuck? Let's fucking go! <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh shit! The only thing that carries any weight in court is hard evidence. But, but Mr. Naruhoto, what evidence is there to use at this stage in the trial? I have an idea. I don't know whether anything will, will come of it, but if there was ever a time to, for using this particular item, yep. Uh, uh, we have among the evidence, it's now. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my god, bro. This is so fucking heat, bro. Could I? Could I? Oh my! Yes! Mr. Sholmes asked if you had that with you earlier. We've exposed all of Lord Strongheart's wrongdoing now. I've no doubt that Mr. Sholmes has already deduced exactly how the truth would unfurl because he's a genius, bro. 
So I think it must be time for the great detective to take center stage, don't you? Yes, absolutely. Let's take the hair by the ears then. And he! Alright, here goes. Hey! Ow, 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 ow! My dear fellows, must I remind you every time? A gentle tug will suffice. Mr. Sholmes! The Great Pursuit, the resolve of- Oh, shit! I, I, that's another song I gotta put in into the playlist. You're looking in quite the wrong direction, Mr. Narahodo, because I'm over here. Ah, uh, Mr. Narahodo, he's... Uh-huh. Is this man a hologram? Wait! Wait, you mean to tell me this was absurd? <laughs> In the early 1900s, they had the technology to have holograms. <laughs> Flamesor, explain this, bro. If Flamesor is here, or Shinobu, any of you, explain this. Britain had the technology for holograms? <laughs> it's Mr. Sholmes! What the fuck? The I wasn't expecting you back, Sholmes. Delighted to be here again, Lord Strongheart. What? What is the meaning of this? Bailiff, seize him! Put that mine in, Put that man in irons. This is. This is a closed court. You've been warned once already, man. <laughs> what the? We can't get him all, my lord. What? What the? What? <laughs> we just go right through him! I'm afraid your efforts are wasted. You see... Get fucked this Scully Yard! <laughs> Bro. I'm afraid your efforts are wasted. You see... The great detective you see before you is composed of an entirely light and shadow. An image, if you will. <sighs> Mr... Bro, I don't even think we have this- I mean, we have hologram technology, but the ability to just move in any place in the room as you want, I don't even think we have that technology here in 2022. Mr. Narahodo, I must congratulate you on your fine deductions. Mr. Sholmes, what on earth is- Are you familiar, I wonder, with bullshit? With the invention known as the telephone. Um, well, yeah, I hear that some public telephones have been installed recently in Tokyo. The sound of the speaker's voice is converted into a, an electrical signal and transmitted instantly to another place. Quite. Sounds are transmitted, so could not... So could not images keep them company, I mused. Iris and I did some modest experimentation to, de uh, to develop such a device specifically for this very day. Modest. Okay, you're like a hundred years early, sir? Modest experimentation, Mr. Sholmes? What a modest description. And somewhat incidentally, I thought we might as just as well transmit an entire scene. Somewhat in incidentally, Mr. Sholmes, now you're just being immodest. D do you mean to say, you're not actually here, Mr. Sholmes? I knew my trusty partner would have no trouble grasping the concept. Except he's grasping the stand to steady himself after your shock arrival. Poor father. I would have hoped he, m he might have been forewarned being the great detective's great partner. Leave my courtroom at once. Get out! Or I swear to you. Dear me, you're on the other- you on the other hand, Lord Strongheart, appear to have a very poor grasp of the situation. Allow me to reiterate, I am not here. Which would, I hope, lead naturally to one asking. Where exactly are you? The very question I was awaiting. I am at present enjoying the air in a rather splendid garden. A garden? Not just any garden, you understand. A garden at Buckingham Palace. B what? You, you, you can't be. Buckingham Palace. What's Buckingham Palace, Mr. Sato? I've never heard of it. Do you ever read the news, Mr. Narahodo? Um... Mr. Sholmes, is Iris with you there? 
Ah, well now. Iris is currently enjoying some tea. With Her Majesty. You're with the Queen? Uh, Her, Maj Her Majesty? Not just any Her Majesty, you mind. Her Majesty, the Queen of, Briti of the British Empire. D what? Oh, so that's how we're gonna get him. Expose all this shit to the Queen so she does something about this. Oh my god. What on earth is all this about? Buckingham Palace is Her Majesty the Queen's residence in London, Mr. Narahodo. Order! Order in the court! I demand immediate silence! Her, Her Majesty the Queen, you can't be! I mean, no! This is some sort of unforgivably disast distasteful trickery by a third-rate detective, that's all. Apparently, apparently, this man is not only a genius, man. This man it has went into the future. <laughs> And brought back technology that he's not supposed to have. Unforgivably distasteful trickery. What an apt description. A closed court session attended by elite members of the, of the judiciary is a rare event. I presume that Her Majesty would be, would be more than a little curious about the proceedings. So, I decided to show her. Everything. From start to finish. Damn. You showed her? Indeed. By the dint of the Herlock Sholmes remote cinematograph. Uh, c a cinema. Cinematograph. Cine. Cinematog. I have no idea. Cinematograph? Cinematograph? Cinematograph. You meddling. This. This is some kind of nightmare. Just as I appear to be standing before you, regaling you with talk of my latest invention. Goat, <laughs> Goat Lock Sholm strikes again, baby! <laughs> no doubt you've inferred that the reverse is also true. You, you don't mean... Her Majesty has seen and heard every moment of the proceedings. Oh shit, I assume there would be no objection. After all, every trial in this country is conducted under the auspices of Her Majesty as you know. You, you, you. I confess, I'm quite impatient to hear Her Majesty's opinion. How about the unforgivably distasteful trickery in which you've engaged, you've been engaged over the past ten years? No, I, I, I was merely. <laughs> oh, so sorry to keep you all waiting. Vicky and I had so much to talk about. Iris, there you are. In fact, I have a little message from Her Majesty. A, a message? Well then, if everyone is sitting comfortably, then... <clears throat> Forthwith and with immediate effect, all authority previously afforded to male strongheart is hereby revoked forevermore. Uh, furthermore, he will be prosecuted for the crimes against his country in a public trial by jury, by jury in the coming days. So... It seems that Her Majesty doesn't believe we need to fight fire with fire. Justice in this country needn't be administered from the shadows at all. Male Strongheart. The darkness you fostered to conceal your despicable actions over these last ten years is a thing of the past now. After today, your brand of law and order has no future, because no longer are you the Lord Chief Justice. In the eyes of the law and her and of Her Majesty the Queen, you are nothing but a criminal. Sholmes is the true hero. Bro, Sholmes? Bro, this man really brought all this together. Adjourned! 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 Court is adjourned! Oh shit, it broke! <laughs> oh shit. Ooh, that must have hurt his back. Oh shit! Oh, he hella guilty. Oh, it's, it's what? Oh shit! He's it, what the fuck? Is he gonna get impaled? Oh shit! Oh shit! What the fuck? <laughs> 
What the fuck? <laughs> oh shit! Bro, that was the probably the craziest breakdown in Ace Attorney history. Oh shit, he's fucked up. Greatest breakdown in the series. Lord Clint Van Zeek left the will in which he confessed to everything. When those words came out of Ahsoki's mouth, it deranged me completely. I knew I must do anything and everything in my power to contain the situation. But I couldn't find the damn document. I searched his cell, but it wasn't there. Which precipitated the jailbreak plot, I presume. Uh, what do you mean? The need to obtain that will was all-consuming. I was sure that if I facilitated Ahsoki's escape, he would emerge with the will somewhere on his person. But despite searching his limp body in the cemetery that night, it still eluded me. It never even crossed my mind that it was concealed in the sword's hilt. Bro. Oh. oh, stretch, I got you, bro. Ah. And hydrate. Ah. Jesus Christ. What pains me now is that my brother left this world without a word to me. I'm sorry, Lord Van Zeeks. In point of fact, I think perhaps that isn't the case. Sorry? How can that be? There is more to his last will and testament. What? <coughs> As I confront the prospect of my demise, I feel bitter regret of my, for my younger brother. Beric, you have always looked up to me, and now you follow in my footsteps to become a prosecutor. It is my fervent wish that my unspeakable deeds should not hinder your advancement. I ask not for understanding, for none could understand my depravity. I ask only for forgiveness. Asogi is a fine detective and a hunter worthy of respect. He has agreed he has agreed to honor my final two wishes. The first is that this document survives. The second, I cannot commit to paper. I have confessed my sins to my wife. May she find resolution in my death. With my eternal gratitude to my Japanese friend, I rest my quill. Clint Van Zeeks. Damn. Clint. Male Strongheart. You colluded with Sashiro Jigoku in a criminal plot so immense it spanned the oceans. And you cold-heartedly murdered all those who knew the truth about what happened ten years ago. But why did you set about that now a whole, uh, decade later? Did I read that right? Why did you say- oh, yeah. To ascend to the very peak. These last ten years made me realize being the Lord Chief Justice wasn't enough. Short of becoming Her Majesty's Attorney General, I could have I could have no real power to affect the changes needed in this country. And for that promotion, I needed to ensure no remnants of the past remained. How could you? I like everything to run smoothly, in the exact manner that I prescribe, like a well like a well oiled machine. And I was just a step away. <clears throat> and for your ambition to succeed? Did you even bother to count the number of brilliant people you had killed? Ah, Mr. Reaper, are you not forgetting something? Such as? You've very much adopted your usual prosecutor-like demeanor in the proceedings now. But the reality of the situation is that you are the defendant in this trial. Uh, 
However, the presiding judge would appear to have fallen from the bench, as it were. Oh, oh we got the old- <laughs> We got the original- The other judge. May I, may I suggest, therefore, that we entrust the final adjudication to an old friend? Uh, my lord. As a member, as a member of the judiciary, I have been following the proceedings from the jerk from the gallery. I must say, I shan't ever forget the extraordinary battle between good and evil that I witnessed here today. The darkness that has blighted justice in our land these past ten years has at last been dispelled, thanks in no small part to the efforts of a bright young star from the east. Defense Counsel Narahodo. You're damn right. Yes, my lord. On behalf of everyone here present in the Old Bailey, I give you my heartfelt thanks. You're too kind, my lord. The first time I faced you in court, just under a year ago now, I had the faintest of, intimi uh, of intimations that if British justice so warped and twisted over its long history was finally to no change, this might just be the man to do it. What? But at the time, I couldn't allow myself to acknowledge the possibility. I couldn't overcome my hatred of the Japanese after the circumstances of my brother's death. Mr. Narahodo, Allow me to apologize for countless discourtesies on my part. You are a lawyer of boundless talent. Oh, Lord Van Seeks. When I first arrived in Great Britain, I was literally a nobody, certainly not a lawyer. The truth is, my fortunes have entirely been made by the miraculous people I've met. My best friend, Kazuma Sogi, who led me here to Britain in the first place. My loyal and ever patient judicial assistant, Ms. Susato, who helped me study to become a lawyer. The brilliant Lord Van Zeeks, who never failed to challenge his Nipponese rival. And not to mention, the exceptional master of logic and reasoning, who showed me the true art, the true art of deduction. The GOAT, Sherlock Holmes. I'm gonna call him Sherlock Holmes now. He deserves it. He deserves the name. Capcom, you change the name. Change the name to Sherlock Holmes. Saving the best for last, Mr. Narahodo. What a relief. I'm well aware that without all of these people's help and support, I wouldn't be where I am today. The truth is a guiding light that always leads to happiness. I've lived by that principle for a long time now, but actually, it's not true. The truth can also cause great pain, sometimes even leave people on the brink of despair. And for that reason, there are those who feel the need to hide the truth, who do it instinctively even. But as soon as we allow ourselves to settle on something other than the truth, the darkness takes hold, and from, th from there it grows, until eventually, it makes us blind to the guiding light of the truth altogether. So that's why it's my belief that we must all we must all resolve to never to avert our eyes from what is just and true. So that we can continue to walk the straight and narrow path ahead. Well, I must excuse myself now. But before I go, Mr. Narahodo, let me compliment you on your grand opus. What? Without your beautifully composed case against Lord Strongheart, Her Majesty would have been unable to act. Thanks to you and your fellows, the haunting undertones corrupting Britain's justice system has have been silenced. Uh, thank you very much. So, until our pra until our paths cross again somewhere. Well then, it would appear that this long trial has finally come to an end. I better not hear an objection, bro. My apologies for any anxiety caused, my lord. 
I'm quite sure we shall meet again here in the courtroom before long, Prosecutor Barak Van Zeeks. In conclusion with, of these proceedings, I hereby declare the defendant Barak Van Zeeks not guilty. Let's fucking go. Fireworks, baby! That is all. Court is adjourned. Objection. Have I shown you all my armband? <laughs> this is very vital to the case. 4th of November, 421 p.m. The Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. It really is all over. But did I sacrifice too much? Mr. Narahoto, I really must congratulate you. It was a truly, truly splendid performance. Honestly, I couldn't be happier for you. Oh, thank you very much. But I really couldn't have done it without you at my side through it all, Ms. Susato. Oh. Your kind words mean so much to me. It really was a very splendid show. That Naruto. I'd have thought you'd be smiling from ear to ear, but you look rather glum. Well, of course I'm delighted that about the verdict, but in exposing the truth, I'm afraid I've caused my client a great deal of pain. I'm really not sure that's what a lawyer ought to be doing. Oh, well in that case, I'm quite sure that when you see Lord Van Zeeks' smiling face, everything will seem much better. He's not smiling. Um, Mr. Sato? Everything seems worse. He has a face like thunder. Oh dear, I really shouldn't have presumed. Mr. Narahodo. Uh, um, yes? Almost a year it's been now since I first encountered you here in this very courthouse. For you to have risen to the level of excellence you demonstrated today. Well, it's quite remarkable. But... But I... I exposed the most unpalatable truth you could ever have imagined in court today. I feel as though I robbed you of something you held so dear. What was it he said? To fight those who dwell in the darkness requires at least some of us to occupy the darkness ourselves. But that... That was just the feeble excuse of a coward. Only those with a steadfast eye for the truth have what it takes to fight the dark forces of crime. You made fine work of establishing that fact in court today. Oh. Well, thank you. What magnanimous words. I'm quite sure that Kazuma Sama would have smiled on his would have a smile on his face at this very moment moment if he were here. Kazuma. He doesn't have a smile on his face? Um, Mr. Sato, there's another face like thunder here. Oh my, and he really he was here. Lord Van Zeeks. Allow me to congratulate you on your acquittal. Congratulate me, or curse me. You failed to bring down the Reaper. I owe you an apology. No, it is I who should apologize. Your father, Genshin. If I had been stronger, then perhaps... I made an unforgivable error of judgment. I can offer no excuse. And I can offer no forgiveness. That said... I suppose you fought for justice and the truth. For that at least, I can't withhold... I can't withhold respect. Your words mean more to me than you could know. I will hold them dear. Kazuma-sama. I must say, there's one thing that's still bothering me. What's that? The will that Lord uh, that the will that Lord Clint Van Zeeks wrote before his duel with my father.
Asogi is a fine detective and a hunter worthy of respect. He has agreed to honor my final two wishes. The first is that this document survives, the second I cannot commit to paper. I have confessed my sins to my wife, may she find resolution in my death. With my eternal gratitude to my Japanese friend, I rest my quill. Clint Van Zeeks. What can the second of his final uh, wishes have been? That your father agreed to honor, you mean? Hmm. I think perhaps... Is that Mikotoba? I knew it. I might be able to shed some light on that. What? Father! It was ten years ago, as you know, the day before. Before the execution was scheduled. I went to the prison to say my farewells to Genshin. Why aren't you putting up? Uh, why aren't you putting up more of a fight, Genshin? If you'd only agree to it, Sashiro and I would gladly petition the government. We've been through this already. You don't need to worry about me. Anyway, Eugen, I have a favor to ask of you. Something of a gr of a gr of great importance. You're one of my greatest friends, Genshin. Whatever it is, consider it done. I'm going to tell you an, adre an address. I need you to go there at once in secret and telling no one. You should find a lady of the gentry in hiding there. A lady of the gentry? She's not in a good way, and she's, a and she's with child. The birth is, Im is imminent. As a medical man, I'd like you to attend to her. Please, you're her only hope. By any chance is the child yours, Genshin? Don't be daft. It's a favor that was asked of me by a man I knew, as his dying wish. Goodness. I swore to the man that I would help. That I would do whatever I could for his wife and his unborn child. But if something should happen to me, I need to ask you that same favor. You're the only person I, uh, I know that, can, uh, that I can truly rely on. What did you say? What did, what did you say? If something, if something should happen to you, tomorrow night, you're going to be, to be. Heh. <laughs> you never know, though, do you? What, what life will bring? All right, then. Tell me the address. I'll head there at once. With Sashiro and, no, not with him. Pardon? This is a favor I'm asking of you. And only you, Eugen. Right, I see. Very well then. That very night I caught a train from Paddington to Dartmoor in, De in Devon. I found the old house in the middle of nowhere it was. An old hunting hound lay asleep in the grounds. No way! The poor woman was on the floor at the back of the darkened room. She was in mortal danger. I broke her waters to precipitate the labor before she weakened further, but it was a torturous birth. Oh, god damn. Jesus. I did everything humanly possible for her and her child. And in the end, I was lucky enough to welcome a new life into the world. But tragically... My efforts to save the mother's life were in vain. I held the healthy newborn girl in my arms and wept for longer than I care to remember. Eventually, in something of a daze, I looked around the room. There was precious little in it, but an old travel trunk caught my eye. <gasps> I knew it! It had clearly been well looked after for over the years, made of top quality leather with fine stitching. But it was when I saw the emblem on the side of it that everything dropped into place. B for Baskerville. But Baskerville? You mean, the woman was the wife of Lord Clint Van Zeeks? That's right. 
Are you gonna tell me that Iris is Clint Van Zeke's daughter? That's right. The newborn was his daughter. But, but that makes no sense. Why on earth wouldn't uh, Clint have entrusted the child to, uh, to my care in that case? I was completely unaware that he even had a daughter. I suppose he didn't really have any choice. What? Well, your brother said that he'd confessed everything to his wife, so she must have been beside herself with worry for her child. If the true identity of the professor were ever to be made public, the girl would be forever branded as the daughter of the infamous mass murderer. Is it Iris? So the only solution was to distance the young girl from the Van Zeke's family as much as possible. I... I don't believe it. I imagine that in his final hour, Lord, Lord Clint Van Zeke's made the obvious choice. He would have thought to himself, This Japanese man here is someone I can trust. I honored my promise to Genshin, of course. However, the only a month later I was summoned back to Japan, and without disclosing the parentage of the child, couldn't obtain permission to take her with me. Oh, how awful. I was completely at a loss. In the end, I had to ask my bro- I- <laughs> Bro, I asked him if he would be a father to her. That- That being Mr. Sholmes, I presume? Yes. He took one look into my eyes and agreed to it on the spot. Mr. Sholmes, he really- He has a heart of gold. That man is a- Is the GOAT, bro! Really? All of it can be said that I did. Uh, all it can be said that I did for the child was to give her a name. Oh, when I had come to Britain, I was trying to escape from the grief of losing my darling wife. So it was her name that I gave the little girl. Your wife's name, Professor Mikotoba. In other words, the name of my mother, Ayami Mikotoba. Oh, that's right. Ayame, or in English, Iris. God, so Iris and Van and Beric Van Zeeks are related. Iris, I I had no idea. Ouch! This is not a What's wrong? The this thing just pinched me on the behind through my trouser, trouser pocket. Hard. Ah, my dear fellows, can you hear me? Mr. Sholmes, is that you? Yes, yes, we can hear you. You see what excessive tugging can do. Let that be a lesson to you. Mr. Sholmes, we weren't able to thank you properly before, but you were simply marvelous. Your checkmate move was a stroke of genius. Indeed it was, wasn't it? I surpassed myself, I feel. It had become apparent to me uh, that to stop the Lord Chief injustice would require such measures. Runo, Susie, Iris. Oh, I'm so pleased. What a wonderful outcome. Her, Her Majesty Queen Vicky said she thought my special blend was delicious. Oh, um, I'm sure she did. After all, no one brews a more delicious tea than you do, Iris. Let's have a party to celebrate. And Mr. Reaper, you must simply come too. What? Um, don't be Edgeworth. Just come through. Uh, I'm afraid I couldn't. The Reaper of the Bailey, flustered by a ten-year-old girl. Again. No, really? Oh, poo. But, I give you my word. That I shall present myself at your residence in the near future to express my gratitude. Oh, how lovely. You've promised now. I won't let you forget. Bye for now, then. All right, Iris. Thank you for all your help earlier. Oh, that was nothing. Just come back home soon. Oh, one final pinch goodbye, was it? <laughs> well, I think I ought to be leaving. Lord Van Zeeks, would you care to accompany me? Certainly. 
Mr. Narahodo, allow me to once again to oh, allow me once again to express my deep gratitude to you. I believe you saved my life. Wait, Lord Van Zeeks. Yes. Um, what are you intending to do now? Hmm. Well, clearly, I shall have to resign from the prosecutor's office. Oh, no. I intend to publicize the full truth about the professor case. Once that's done, the Van Zeeks family will be ostracized completely from London society. Surely not. So as soon as I am free from my employment, I shall leave the capital. Oh, I see. Don't be a fool. Are those the actions of a man once feared as the mighty Reaper of the Bailey? I beg your pardon. For the past ten years, you've endured the pseudonym and been cast as one of the Dark Forces yourself. Now that you've finally been freed from that disrepute, your battle is just beginning, surely. Well, I certainly never expected to hear those words from your lips. I waited a very long time to come to London. Now I'm properly here, I intend to learn all that I can. Anyway, goodbye for now, Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Hazuma Sogi. It seems as though he's really matured suddenly. He's not the only one who's matured, Mr. Naruhodo. Hmm? Well, I think we should make our way back to Baker Street. We must help Iris with tonight's dinner. We must. It was then that I came to an important decision about my future. Fourth of November, six twenty-five p.m. Sholmes is sweet. I'm home! Oh my god. Ah! Jesus Christ. About time you got here. We've been winning ages, Otto. What, what are you doing with that? Colorful piece of history. It's a party, isn't it? It's gotta go off with a bang. I mean, fireworks, ideally. But when you ain't got fire, smoke's the next best thing, ain't it? There's a girl on Fresno Street who could help you with that, I think. Right. I'll remember that. You don't have to reload that thing every time I speak. You really must hear this. It's quite the most extraordinary thing. I assure you, it will defy your expectations. Take down every detail now, Mikotoba. Ah, the world-famous great detective regaling his partner with the tale of his adventure. Sight to behold. Would you care to ha would you care a hazard to guess? Where do you suppose the fiendish runaway had concealed himself? Would you believe? Inside the trunk I found abandoned in his cabin. I would believe it, yes. I say, Mikotoba, I detect not a hint of surprise. I wonder why that is, hmm? Maybe because I was there at the scene of, as well, Sholmes? What? You were? Then why the deuce didn't you say so before? Not quite the sight I was expecting to behold. He's still a goat, though, but still. It's hard not to feel privileged to see it. Hello, Mr. Sholmes, Professor Mikotoba. I'm finally back from the Bailey. And not a moment too soon. A feast prepared by Iris and Miss Susato awaits. I must say, I haven't seen Susato looking so happy in a very long time. Ah, Bruno! There you are. Dinner's on the table, everyone. Please do come and take a seat. Time to fill me boots. Goodness, is that really true, Gina? Yep, I'm losing me copper's globber and going back to what I know best. It's a diver's life for me. You're really leaving the police force? But why, Ginny? Well, the boss ain't around no more, so... Oh. 
And anyway, no matter how hard I try, that reaper ain't never gonna accept a diver turn to dick, is he? Well, people can change, you know. Ah yes, that reminds me. I'd rather I rather thoughtfully offered to relieve the bailiff of this now defunct piece of evidence. Eh. It's the inspector's pocket watch. They're <laughs> they're playing Grex's theme now, and the crown has been reattached. That watch was his pride and joy, a symbol of his great achie great achievements at Scotland Yard. For ten years without fail, it measured every second of the man's remarkable career. But now, it's stopped. Someone needs to keep the memory of Inspector Gregson's career alive by taking on the great responsibility of winding that watch every single day again. Yes, someone with an equally fierce d d uh, detective spirit. It's gotta be me. There ain't no one else. Quite right. I mean, after all, the boss was... It was my boss. Yes, Ginny. Yes, he was. Oh, yeah. And I made you a promise and all, didn't I, Iris? That I'd become a proper detective one day and track down your old man. Oh! We actually already know. Alright, then it's decided. I'll do it. And I swear. I'll find your dad and bring him in kicking and screaming. Uh-oh. I'm not entirely sure that would be appropriate. Yeah, I think, Gina, it might be best to, uh, well, I think I'd like you to forget that promise, Gina. Uh! Iris? Did she figure it out? Well, obviously I've always wondered about who my real daddy is. Of course I have. I wanted to know where I've come from. I thought I'm, it might tell me something about myself. But I've caused such a lot of trouble trying to find out. For so many people. Hurley, Bruno, Professor Mickey. Oh, no, not at all, my dear. Really, you owe no apology to anyone. Well, anyway, I've decided to give up on it. Because I've finally realized my daddy is the greatest in the world. I don't think it matters what his name is or where he's from. Don't you agree? Hurley? <laughs> With every word, Iris. <laughs> Thank you, Hurley. Thank you, Daddy. Damn. I think Mikotoba... Yes, Sholmes. I think that I ought to express my gratitude to you. Oh? For six years, you and I solved many a mystery together. And during that time, I remember countless expressions of gratitude for our good services. But a moment ago, I heard the most pleasing expression of gratitude of them all. And I should never have experienced it. Were it not for you. You old softy, Sholmes. But I must confess... It's a weight off my mind to hear you say it. Well then, I think this calls for a lengthy violin recital, wouldn't you say? Oh, well, the food would go cold. That's the only problem. Maybe next week, Hurley. Are you sure a week is long enough, Iris? Even amidst the troubling of cases, even amidst the most troubling of cases, even reeling from the most shocking of revelations, and there were a lot of them. Returning in the evening to this suite of rooms, there's always warmth and happiness to be had. The home of the world's greatest detective, the GOAT. And my home too, with my greatest family. Fourth of November, 9.37pm, Narohoto's Legal Consultancy. This attic room has been my home and office for almost a year now. I've certainly had some unforgettable experiences whilst I've lived here. But I think now, the time has come. Oh, we're actually gonna go? Time to bid this place farewell. Narahodo. 
Oh, shit. Oh, Professor! Are you alone? I didn't hear any sound from Susato's room. Yes, susato san went out after dinner. She took a carriage. Something about an important matter she needed to take care of. Ah, I see. I wanted to thank you for what you did earlier. Oh? With Iris, I mean. When, I, when the subject of her father came up. Lord Clint Van Zeeks. I made up my mind many years ago never to tell her, her who her who, who her real father was. It's what was agreed with Genshin, after all. Lord Clint Van Seeks' final wishes before he died, you mean? Yes, I've had to take some rather drastic steps at times to protect that secret, you know. Calling Susato uh, back to Japan six months ago, for example. That's why? When I read Soseki-san's report about his final days in London, my heart nearly stopped. You'd stumbled across the crux of that terrible case. A, the dog's collar. The description of the Baskerville insignia left me in no doubt. Baskerville. If you if you'd decided to investigate the insignia, sooner or later you you would have made the connection to the Van Zeeks. And to make matters worse, Susato knew of the unpublished story as well. The story that Iris had written based on my notes from the time. Ah yes, the Hound of the Baskervilles. Exactly. It was a work of fiction, but based on the grim reality of a huge beast of a dog being used as a murder weapon. A dog with the Baskerville family emblem around its neck. Armed with those two clues, I feared you and Susato might, have arri might arrive at the truth. So I invented that story about having collapsed to justify her leaving London and returning to, to Japan at once. All in aid of halting any investigations you and she might have been contemplating. I see. Something I've never understood is why Susato-san came across that manuscript in Japan, I, though. You know, Iris is the hound of the Baskerville story, I mean. Shom sent it to me. That was before Susato left Japan. He was very troubled about what he should be uh, about what he should be done about it. You see. I'd read it and carelessly left it on my desk, which is where Susato uh, came across it, of course. Ah. It was the only case Sholmes and I ever pursued that I didn't record in meticulous detail. I was stunned when I discovered that young Iris had pieced together so much of it from my paltry notes. Sholmes and I discussed the matter and decided that we couldn't allow the story's publication. At that point, I returned the manuscript by post to Sholmes for safekeeping. So you did all that to stop Iris from finding out the truth about her father. That's right, because Sholmes had told me how astute she'd become. However, having witnessed events in court today, I must say my opinion was some has somewhat shifted. Oh? I think at some point in the future, the time will come for Iris to know the truth. And when it does, well, I believe it will be for the best. I think so, too. Actually, Professor, I... I wanted to talk to you about something, too. Judging from that expression, I'd say you've come to a decision, have you? Yes, I have. I... I will be returning with you to, with you to Japan. Are you quite sure? We're really going. Damn. Are you quite sure? I'm really only here as a substitute for Kazuma, but he's here in Britain now, as originally intended. Locum student Narahodo doesn't really have a right to stay, I think. I see. Looking back now, when I first arrived here in February... <laughs> My becoming a lawyer just seemed to be the way things turned out. With Kazuma, Susato-san, and Mr. Sholmes all gently pushing me in that direction.
I spent the best part of a year immersed in this world, but always aware of a seed of doubt inside me. Until today? Standing in that courtroom earlier, all doubts vanished from my mind. I was totally focused. I was sure of my belief in my client. I was sure I could see the trial through. And at the end of it, I finally realized no one else chose this path for me. I chose it myself. The path of a defense lawyer, eh? Yes. That's what I am now. That's what I that's what I'll be going uh, back with you to Japan as. And that's the path I will be following for the rest of my life. Well, sounds like you've made up uh it well, well it seems it sounds like you've made quite a resolution there. I have. Very well then. I must say, it's extremely welcome news. I shall make arrangements for your return this uh, first thing tomorrow, but I don't imagine we will depart for a few days. Now with this symposium having been cancelled now, such a shame. Never mind, I'm sure there will be other opportunities in the future. Well then, I bid you good night. Oh shit. Uh, Susaru-san. I just wanted to let you know that I'm back. Did you, um, hear what your father and I were discussing? I'm sorry, I did, yes. I couldn't help but... Oh, how much did you hear? Well, from the part about Iris' real father, I think. In other words, from the beginning. So you've made up your mind. You'll return to Japan and continue working as a defense lawyer. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. I really should have consulted you about it. I did want to earlier this evening, actually, but you'd already gone out. Oh no, that's quite alright. I already knew that it was, it's what you decided, uh, that's what you decide, Naruhado-san. You did? Oh shit, what's this theme? Um, Susano-san? Duh! Yes? I suppose this means it has to be farewell soon. I suppose. You'll be a great help to Kazuma going forward. I mean, I know he's a brilliant, a brilliant lawyer, but he's new to the British courtroom. He'll certainly benefit greatly having a, br a brilliant judicial assistant at his side. I'll do my very best. I wish I could say it, but I just can't. I can't ask her to come with me. After all, she has she was always supposed to be come she was always supposed to be coming to Britain as Cosmo's assistant. It's growing late. We should both try to get some sleep. I'm sure you must be exhausted after today. Oh, yes. You're right. Before I retire, let me just say one more time. You really were quite splendid in court today. So if you ask me, anyone who thinks of you as a substitute or a locum uh, should be ashamed of themselves. Susano-san. Thank you. Damn. Ah, oh, shit. We on this pier again? The 7th of November, 7, uh, 5.42 a.m. Port of Dover, Quayside. I can't believe this day's finally come. You're really leaving then, Ryuno? I'm afraid so, Iris. Thank you so much for everything. I don't know what I'll do without your wonderful cooking and delicious tea. 
Oh, I wish you weren't going. But you have to come back and visit. Say you will. Of course. I promise. Well, it was a very brief reunion, but it was a pleasure to pursue a case with you again after so long. For a while, at least, it felt like old times. Yes, I suppose on reflection... <laughs> There's something to be said for it, having a little fun once in a while. I'll just go and say goodbye to the professor as well, I think. All right, Aris, you do that. Oh, this is actually voiced? Sato-san. <laughs> I've just checked, Naruharo-san. Your luggage is already on board. Such a beautiful morning. Perfect for embarking on a journey, isn't it? Sato-san, before I set off, I'd just like to say how thankful I am for everything you've done for me. And give my warmest regards to Kazuma, please. Actually, I think you ought to give him your regards in person, don't you? Sorry? Ryonosuke. Oh, he is here. Kazuma! <laughs> Azuma, what are you doing here? <laughs> Do you really think I'd miss my best friend's departure? Thanks. To be honest, I'd been looking forward to our wild time tearing up the streets of Her Majesty's, Her Majesty's capital, but... Mm. Well, we'll have to save that for another time. Personally, I'm looking I'm looking forward to facing you in court again. Ah. Me too, but we're both defense lawyers, so I'm going to become a prosecutor. I'll stay in Lord Van Zeke's tutelage for the time being, but before long... I intend to be just as formidable as the Reaper himself. Oh, I see. Actually, Ryonosuke, I have a favor to ask. Name it. I'd like you... I'd like you to take care of this for me, uh, for me for a while. Karma? Why? Because I've seen it now. I've seen what's inside me. The demon that reared its ugly head that day. Ah, don't play the, the the song, bro. God damn it. It was only for the briefest of moments. The last time I came face to face with that inspector. But it was unmistakable. I wanted to kill him. I've always known there are demons that live inside people, and now I know there is one in me. The fact, the fact that it very nearly consumed me is something I'll carry with me until the end of my days. While I devote my life to fighting those whose demons have got the better of them, as a prosecutor. So, that's what you've resolved to do, is it? I'll 
Until I'm ready to face the demon within me, to slay it once and for all, I leave this in I leave this in your care, if you'll take it. Of course I will. I'll keep it by my side, always. Jesus, man, this ending. <laughs> Until we meet again, then. You have your path to follow, and I have mine. Um, Naruhodo san? The path, you're the path you're going to follow from now on? <laughs> oh shit! I wonder if I might follow it at your side. Uh, unless I'd be a bird, huh? What? I mean, uh, I would very much like you to come with me. But, but aren't you... You're so predictable, Ryunosuke. I am? Honest. Honestly, you never change at all. But that's what I like about you. <laughs> you mean, you knew about this? It was the evening after Lord Van Zeek's trial came to an end. She came to see me at the prosecutor's office. Really? When I had that conversation with Professor Mikotoba? So, you'd go with Ryunosuke back to Japan? Yes. I know it's unfair for, of me to follow my own interests like this. Coming here especially to tell me. You're a stickler for etiquette, aren't you? Well? What are his feelings? We've never discussed it, of course, and Arahado-san has made no suggestion. I worry that perhaps I'd be a burden to him. He's just as he's just as much of a stickler for etiquette as you are. He'd never say anything before he was asked. But I'd feel happy knowing that you were with him. Look out for him on my behalf, will you? Hi. Of course. Sato-san. Sato-san. What do you think, Narahodo-san? With you by my side, no trial would seem too daunting. So if you're willing, I'd be honored if you'd come with me. Together we can take on the world. I'm terribly incompetent, but if you'll help me, I'd be delighted. No, not at all. If anyone's terribly incompetent, it's me. What's wrong? Your luggage to Sato-san, there's no time. The ship's going to set sail any moment now. Or any minute now. It's all right. There's no need to worry. She already has that bitch on the on the ship. I fucking knew it. As it happens, my luggage is already on board too. It is?
Your fine judicial assistant has everything in hand as always, I see. Bruno, your ship's about to leave. Time to go then. Look after yourself, Runosuke. Kazuma, draw your sword. Whoa. Oh, ah. Uh. <laughs> a, a duel of words across the courtroom. A day I eagerly await as a lawyer. I've been waiting to hear you say that, partner. Oh, that is so dope, bro. Don't forget me then, uh, don't forget me then, Kasuma, uh, Kazuma. As if I could, Ryonosuke. And Mr. Sholmes, thank you so much. I'm very much indebted to you. Indeed, Mr. Narahodo, I believe you are. I'll never forget all you've done for me during my time in London. Quite. Right. I should like to think you will remember your judge of gratitude. Especially when I visit you in your country. What? The truth is, although many are ignorant of the fact, the world is far smaller than most folk realize. Well, I'd be delighted if you came to Japan one day. Oh yes, we'd welcome you with open arms, Mr. Sh Mr. Sholmes. That sounds wonderful, I can't wait. In that case, let us conclude th that this is to be a merely is to be merely a brief parting, my dear fellows. And that brings us to the end of my adventures in Great Britain. A peculiar twist of fate brought me halfway around the world those many months ago, but that was just the start of my journey. Who knows where fate will lead me next? Still, I'm confident this won't be my last meeting with the friends I've made in London. And when we're together again, no doubt the first words I'll hear will be, Um, the game is afoot. The ship with our friends from the east sailed steadily towards their, the distant horizon. But Shomz's face was alight with joy. The times may change, but a steadfast friendship will remain true, Wilson. We have but to gently close our eyes and we are with our companions once again. Once more. So I do just that. And when I do, I can hear a strong familiar force wing at, voice ring out. Objection? Oh, I gotta... Oh, oh my god! I had to screenshot that! 
Oh my god. <laughs> I had to screenshot that 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 panel right there. Shoot to Kumi, the the goat! The motherfucking goat, bro! I've been thoroughly inundated un with inquiries about my remote cinematograph of that day, but I'm no purveyor of electrical goods, and one of the promised close port secrecy. Anyway, I've decided an absence of London is in order. A sojourn in distant climes. The Empire of Japan, perhaps. I understand that wardrobe class incurs no charge whatsoever. The fucking goat, bruh. I gave a little note to Hurley the other day. It just said, thank you for everything, daddy. But it made Hurley cry. I gave him some lotion I'd invented as well to dye his hair red safely. But he said that might make, <laughs> make him try to see so he'd rather not use it. This... I'll, w I'll wait until all the parts are done before uh, I talk about the game. In those days, when I was known as the Reaper, I felt your presence at my side. Once unable to bear the burden of that grim pseudonym, I even retired from the courtroom. Despite everything, I still wear your prosecutor's badge with pride. But the darkness that once beset me is no more, as you too are no more. In the words of a young foreign friend of mine, I must strive forward toward a brighter future. Jesus Christ. The boss left a note for me, you know? And I can read every letter, uh, letter now, from A to Z. It's clear to load up stuff up. The boss was trying to protect me, see? And that's exactly what me and Chief Inspector Toby are here gonna are gonna keep doing for the Londoners. I only wish I could have said how grateful I was before he, you know. Gina. The truth is, I'm not the upstanding fellow you think I am. It might be a divert heart, but it's a good heart. You reminded me I need to be true to myself. I've got one more job to take care of before it's Tata -ta to London town for the, for the foreseeable. And then, I've got to complete your education in the art of uh, detection, a la Gregson, as they say. That fucking eyebrow, bro. <laughs> this motherfucker? Your Excellency, this man is accused of illegally entry. What the? F what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, really? My friend says the British and doing a wonderful job. What? <laughs> Perhaps I should have engaged the services of a le uh, regular legal team. Oh my god. Dr. Sai. Mama, is it true that about Japanese people? Are they experts at filleting corpses? Yes, they are. Fish corpses, on the whole. I'd like to hone my own filleting skills. You don't mind, do you, Mama? Yes, I do. I'm not a corpse yet. You see the reference in the Japanese court portion? Ah, oh, no, I missed it! What was the reference? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to rewatch that. This motherfucker. Here I am again in Great Britain on the invitation of my. Uh, he sent me a very nice uh, letter saying he'd show me around. 
But, but what have I done? I was so excited. I picked this splendid hotel and now I can't afford the bill. Oh, Barrack, come to my rescue again, please. I, I just wish I could vanish into thin air sometimes. Oh, you're... Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. Because Hosonaga did do that. And he's like, I should have gotten a different legal team. <laughs> I love how he, he still had, like, the, uh, the bruise. Oh, shit. Dun, dun, dun. Even though in the witness stands, I could never speak of it. The Lord Chief Justice and I had struck a bargain, you see. For a faithful reproduction of the visage, there is nothing that we tusk spells could we would not do. Hey, everyone calls me gossip. I sell jaunty little tidbits to passers-by, you know. They're in the same cell. He sells a spaghetti bar. <laughs> this game. Oh, Daily, how charming. You made lots of new friends here, I see. Oh, she's still with him. Yes, and we're, when we're released, we're, going all, we're all going to strike rich together. That's nice. I gotta say, this game is somehow better than the first one. Like, I I doubted Richard when he said it was better. When I was accepted on the stud foreign study tour, I knew exactly what path I had to take. And however it, and however it might have ended, I, might, I knew I wanted you to, there to see it. If I'd ended up in the dock, there's no one I would have rather, rather had defending me. But now... Thanks to you, there's a new path I want to take. I'm sure we'll meet again in the courtroom, my friend. Until then, I leave Karma in your care. This game, like, tied pretty much all the loose ends from the first game and the stuff that was introduced in this game and explained and just showed so much about all these characters that I just... Like, no other Ace Attorney game really d has done it to this level. I've made some tea, Naruhoto san. It's important that you rest while you can. Once we arrive in Japan, you shall be busy establishing your new office. I'm so delighted to be accompanying you. After all, your talents have been recognized by a great detective. Because you really are the greatest of lawyers. A great Ace Attorney- She said it! She said the thing! <laughs> and they really are rolling credits, bro. Ah, oh, that's a great photo. Are they gonna zoom in on it? Hey, let's go! Ah, <laughs> oh, that's such a great photo. She said the thing! <laughs> this game... I think this is like a secondary credits, if I'm not mistaken. Or is that the end? Ah, uh, there is. Yeah. Uh, shoutouts to Shinobu for liking in between the stream. <laughs> um, appreciate you, bro. All I'm gonna say is... I absolutely love this game. Um... You just beat it? I just beat it. <laughs> I did just beat it, Shinobu. Uh... You know... Back when I beat the first game, I was like... You know, I want to give Great Ace Attorney 1 a 10 out of 10 because, you know, because I just love that game so much. We were, we were here! <laughs> um, I'm spoiler free. Best game in the series so close to um, the runner-up is uh, Trials and Tribulations. Like, I, so I was like, alright, I'll give the first game a 9 out of 10, 9.5 out of 10. This might legit be a 10 out of 10, bro. There there might have been some things here and there that were like the whole life the the whole fucking uh hologram thing by Sholmes like all right. <laughs> but other than that like 
I just absolutely enjoyed playing this game, and and I said this. I think I said this back when I beat the first uh, Great Ace Attorney game. Like this is this proves that they can still make a uh, an amazing Ace Attorney game. Like this absolutely proves it. The first game proves it, and the second game absolutely proves it. Please, bro. And uh, Ace Attorney Seven, please be good. But but this was absolutely fantastic. Amazing characters, amazing revelations. Uh, I I'm gonna I'm gonna do it, bro. This game is a ten out of ten for me. Give the series back to Shu Takumi, facts, bro. Shu Takumi, please come back. This is a ten out of ten. Absolutely. This, uh, and this might be recency bias, but I think this is my new favorite Ace Attorney game. Uh, you think uh, you're gonna stream the that uh, needy needy streamer overload? Yeah, I think at some point I will. Uh, the next game I'm gonna play is um, Life is Strange: True Colors, because <laughs> I've been saying for like a year. That I was gonna play that game and I still haven't. But now that I've finished this game, um, but like, I just don't like. I don't know what else to say other than like I just love this game. Uh, even this guy. Fucking male Strongheart, who was basically Damon Gant. I think he was just a much more fleshed out version of Damon Gant. Which works. And I'm, I'm sad to see this. I, I hope. I know there's no reason for there to be a Greatest Attorney 3. But I'm going to miss this series so much. This was such a great... I guess technically a prequel series. The these are the games the series needed. Yeah, like you know, because before everybody would say like before these games came out, everybody would say like, oh, the only good ones were the original trilogy. And now it's well, not now, but like back when these games first came out, like it was disproven. And now that they're released overseas, where more people can play them. It's just so obvious, like, these games are so amazing and better than, in my opinion, than the original trilogy. And they're back where they started. In Japan. The Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Finn. Bro, absolutely love this game. Um, and I'm gonna have to do the obligatory, uh, oh my god, that is, I gotta get that. Screenshot. Screenshot. I don't think it went through. No! <laughs> I... 10 out of 10 game for me. Uh, the VOD will be up uh, tomorrow morning. It's in the gallery. It's in the gallery. All right, let's go. Um, I already know what the thumbnail is going to be. <laughs> either either that, what they just showed, or or, or uh, that like silhouette of Ryunosuke doing the objection pose. Maybe that one, but absolutely fantastic. Shoutouts to everybody who came through to the stream. And watched it, um, and supported this the stream and this series. Uh, and to everybody watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching the vods. Um, honestly, it was a fantastic game to stream, and uh, yeah, like I, I appreciate all the support, all all the support on social media and and on Twitch and YouTube. Thank you so much. This game made my dick rock hard all over again. <laughs> like, 
Now I know why, like, as soon as you beat that game, Rich, you told me, like, you have to fucking play- you finish this game. You have to finish it. And, uh, I, bro, it's my bad that it took me so long to finish this game, but I'm so glad that I finished it. Um, another one to add on the list, I guess. And, yeah, like, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, I hope, uh, you all have a great rest of your night. Hopefully it's been a great, uh, I haven't even started it, sir. I think you would like it. I, I think I heard you saying that you enjoyed, um, uh, the original trilogy. So I'm sure you would love these games, Shinobu. They're fantastic. Like, honestly, everybody, if you haven't already, please go buy The Great East Attorney. <laughs> I know it's been out for a year now, but buy it anyway. It doesn't matter. Buy it anyway. <laughs> please buy it. This this series deserves it. <laughs> um so I don't really have anything to plug. Like I said before, I don't think we're having a podcast this week. So I guess just you know, follow, subscribe like the video I guess and I'll be back with uh, Life is Strange True Colors and hopefully that game is fire I heard it was pretty good so we shall see um, but anyways guys I think that's gonna do it for me um, Man, show this man some love. Hey, bro, the only person you need to show love to is D-Rail, bro. Please go sponsor D-Rail. <laughs> Please go sponsor D-Rail, bro. Please. Um, but yeah, anyways, as I said, this is uh, the finale, obviously, if you couldn't tell. And I guess I'll be back with uh, Life is Strange Shoe Colors next week. I don't know what day. I might take a little bit of break from streaming because I did stream every day for like, god damn. <laughs> so we'll see. But I, next time I stream, I, it will definitely be uh, Life is Strange. So tune in for that. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.